sports team and everything. And me, I don't even freaking play it. You know, all the things like you couldn't do that. I, that not meant so much to me as a as a person. He's just a great guy. I just I'm gonna miss him. Okay, well, I'm gonna. I'm gonna Back on KDWA, glad you are with us here on Saturday. We're at Two Rivers High School in West St. Paul, and we are also getting ready for a video. So Jerry and I are trying to measure all that stuff up and try to keep our, uh, our, 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 our broadcast separate, if that makes sense to you guys. Um, we, we, we're kind of doing it, it to lack a better explanation. Two separate broadcasts. So Jerry and I are wearing headsets for you folks on the radio, and then we will also be having a handheld microphone in front of us for the camera because that is the best way we can get everything going and also get our ad spots on there as well. We also want to welcome everybody uh, on our video stream who is watching, and Nick Tuckner and Jerry Rupp also here now, and Jerry, you can even have your, your handheld mic now too. You can even pick that up and, and even use that as, as well. Okay, thanks. Uh, Thank you. Hi, hello, how are you, sir? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Jerry here with us as well. Everybody with us, we hope, and uh, we're going to have some fun here today on KDWA. Raiders are at 3-2, and two, the uh, Two Rivers uh, Warriors. And, man, I'm going to call him Henry Sibley a million times today, Jerry, so you're going to yeah. have to correct me and make sure that I'm on the straight and narrow here as we're yeah. going. But um, this is a game where we know the Raiders have to play their best game, but we also know that without a guy like Peyton Burrow tonight, other guys are going to have to step up. So that best game might look a little bit different tonight. But as Coach and I have always talked about throughout the year, having guys step up when called upon. We've been blessed with not too many injuries this year, but when we've had guys have to come out either for an injury, like we said, or just a break, the next guy up mentality has been there, Jerry. And if we get that tonight out of whoever's in the backfield, or even, like we said, changing in and out, even up front, we get that game tonight and stay fresh. We're going to be fine here when we leave after the fourth quarter. I think so. And like you said, you know, Burrow going down, that's a big loss for us. But in some ways, it's a positive because when a guy like that goes down where they all expect him to do everything, if he's down, then that just opens up the playbook and the toolbox, and now uh, Two Rivers has to cover so many more guys, it can't just key on Burrow. So that actually can work to the strength of, the, of Hastings. <laughs> Like you said, we're going to struggle back and forth with Two Rivers and Henry Silva. You know, it's going to take a little <laughs> bit, people. You know, it's growing pains, name changes, and whatnot. And, and y'all, y'all will know too that, you know, when you hear Two Rivers, it's like, who the heck are they playing? Are they in Wisconsin? No, How many no. times did you hear that this week? Seriously, yeah, I mean, I know. I know. <laughs> and I have to explain it to them, you know, and I have to go into a history lesson. Unfortunately, yep. you know, we've, know. You know, we've become teachers amongst, you know, in addition to broadcasters. But you're a pretty um, good one, though. You know, oh, shucks. <laughs> So, you know, well, we're just excited here to be on we a are. Saturday afternoon, a beautiful day, a little bit of a breeze, and we're looking out over the field. Little, little it's, it's starting to get just a little hazy, but not too bad. This is going to be a fun afternoon. I am so jacked, and I know all of you folks are as well, wherever you are listening or watching to us, or watching to us, watching us. Uh, I do want to have you folks help me out, though, because my, uh, my post didn't work on Facebook on my personal page yesterday. So what I want you folks to do, is if you have Facebook or Twitter, go to your respective social media and retweet or share our post regarding where to find this game, whether on the radio or on video. There are a few different ways to do it. Those posts are at our both of our social media pages, and if you could go out and share those for us with Raider Nation, that would be greatly appreciated, and it will help a lot of people limit the, uh, kind of I was saying with Jerry, I mean, uh, the, the magic phone number has gotten out a little bit too uh, often here in the Tri-County area, and I'm getting phone calls during games and texts and stuff, fans, and, and I know a few folks were a little bit, um, uh, not ha I don't say not happy with me, but, but were a little bit short with me because I was not responding to those folks during the game. Well, if you have your phone, 
you can get anything you want regarding the game. You can see it, watch it, listen to it all on your phone, Jerry Rupright. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. multiple outlets here, so you, you are not going to be in the dark, that's for sure. And you know, Nick, you just said something that we, I don't know, I'm sure the other coaches do the same thing, but we as coaches, like for our program, we tell people, you know, parents or kids or whatever, you know, be respectful. Don't contact us after, you know, 9 o'clock at night. Don't right. contact us before 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. You know, even though we're up, we might be up, but still, you know, it's a common courtesy. Right. You know, you just, we'll, we'll, we'll be there. You know we'll yeah. be there. We're here for you, folks. Exactly. And that's what we're going to do here, fans. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our break here for the anthem. You folks on video will watch the anthem, and then we'll take a break here on the radio on KDWA. pick up now with the Ram box or even the multi-function tailgate that splits right open so you can get those decoys, those hunting things right out of that bed, no problem with it. Get a brand new Ram for only $2.99 a month. And we've got the largest selection down at Hastings Chrysler Center. So come on in and hunt for those deals and come on in to 2980 Highway 6 South or call us at 651-375-200. And when you get in there, you need to tell them that... All right, fans on video, we'll be right back with you. All right, everybody, we are back on KDWA and also want to thank Hunter Pinky from HCTV for coming with us today. Without him, we wouldn't be on the air, um, plain and simple. He's been awesome, and we'll have more of our uh, sponsors during our video feed, during our next breaks and whatnot. We just want to make sure we got all set up here on the radio and video is now we're ready to go. Hastings will kick it away, and it's Race Philly and putting it in the air. And here we go. We are underway. And it's Two Rivers with the football. And they will return the football up the far left side, but not for very long because the Raiders have Aiden Downey in there on special teams. Comes up, makes a big pop, and here we go as the Raiders come out on defense with the ball south of the 20 yard line. Yeah, the kick was returned by Carl Strohoffer, number three for Two Rivers. He made a nice catch on the, the kickoff and uh, tried to make toward his left a little bit, but Aiden Dowdy wasn't having it. He was right there, and he made the stop at the 19-yard line. So that's great setup for the, the Raiders and the defensive start. Love watching the young kids step up early on in the season and make big plays. Evan Coffey, quarterback, wears the number five, really low in the crouch. Back to pass on first down. He rolls back, had plenty of time. Pass over the middle, knocked down. Good play by Danny Milner. As Sibley on the play, looking for Ozzie Robinson, a 5'10", 175-pound senior running back out of the backfield. And a little bit too much time, but I think the Raiders uh, probably weren't thinking that they were going to pass on first down. Well, initially he was looking home run ball down right. the right sideline, but uh, his streaker was, was uh, covered, and so he went across the flats there and it looked for a second like he might have found a seam but Miller got under the last second did a perfect defensive back slap away the ball right as it got to the receiver's hands. Coffee back under center looking for the jet sweep and he has it as he gives it off again to Ozzie Robinson so so far it's been a lot of coffee to Robinson through the first couple of snaps as we are underway at Two Rivers High School 
Formerly known as Henry Sibley, the Warriors, still the same colors, that red and gold, kind of a 49ers-esque, right, Jer? I mean, that's maybe the best way. Raiders have their road Los Angeles Rams throwbacks from the 80s and early 90s. Exactly, yeah, that's a good description of the two colors of the Raiders and the uh, two rivers Warriors. Old school <laughs> NFC West matchup, right? Yep, I mean, exactly. <laughs> near Fash Mart, it's going to be Coffee under center. Wing T for Coach Orth. Puts a man in motion to the far side. And Coffee off his back foot, going to pass. Pressure was put on, good pass, good catch. Catch made at the 25, not going to be enough for a first down. This should bring up fourth down here. And a stop made far side by the Raiders. Looked like Luke Charlton yep. was in on that tackle. Luke Charlton, nice job. So they, they completed the pass, but uh, they kept him well in front of the first down marker. And Luke Charlton he made immediate tackle, so he was not able to, to uh, get extra yards after the catch. So nice job by the Raiders. Get a three and out uh, punting situation into the win for Two yep. Rivers. So that looks great for our guys. And hopefully it'll be a short punt and we get get some great field position on uh, Henry Sibley's side. So what Jerry and I talked about. Get that three and out if they're going to take the ball right away. Now we'll get the ball to start the second half, too. Short punt. High in the Air. Taken there by the Raiders, Reifenberger across midfield, and that's actually Bezdecek. He'll fall yeah. ahead to the 44 yard line of Henry Simbley slash wow. two rivers. I just said um, it the first time. I, I, oh. I, I, I'll tell you what, man, that was risky. Uh, Bezdecek did not single for fair catch. He had two guys breathing down on him. He had a couple of blockers that were, you know, kind of getting in the way of the, uh, the, the gunners for two rivers, but. You know, he didn't take that fair catch. He decided to go for it on a run, and it worked out okay. The Raiders gained about 10 yards off of that, but a little bit scary there on that catch when it came in. Little bit scary, no doubt about that, but the Raiders now had the football, only 44 yards to go to pay dirt. Raiders come out with Axel Arnold. He's the quarterback wearing the number seven, patrolling right hash out of the shotgun. Pistol formation running back off to his right. That's Fryer Booth. He'll take the carry. Up the middle he goes, and he just uses that body and keeps those legs moving. Tough running will get him four and a half, maybe five. Second down, we'll take that on first down all day long, Jerry Rupp. Yeah, exactly. You know, that, that play right there, I think, you know, Hastings offense now is just going to kind of feel out the defense of two rivers and kind of see what they're doing, what their down linemen are doing, and also what their backers are doing. Get a feel for where they're at and the coach, the coach, like, of course, the coaches up here are getting eyeball that and why are <laughs> calling down to some plays that might be effective. Raiders will go again, spread out two receivers to the right, one to the left. Man in motion across the line as well, and the handoff will go to Fryer Muth, man across the line. Actually, we're working as a blocker, the first of which, and also Bezdecek came out through a body out there too, and that's a first down carry. And Jerry, we, we've talked about this all year. The guys on the outside just are not skilled guys. They can also block, and that is a skill too that I think that people don't talk enough about. A great block set up by Bez, and also 42 in on the play too for the Raiders. That that's Thomas Reifenberger. Remember, the tight ends, they are a big key to this Raider offense. Well, Steven was over here, too, so they had both Reifenbergers. Uh, and the difference there between our kind of sweep and uh, two, two Rivers sweep is that our guy went outside and just kept it going, did not try to cut back up inside into the, the, uh, the coverage. Out of the gun. Back to pass, Axel. Three step drop. Three, a three step drop. Easy for me to say. <laughs> Caught by Reifenberger over the middle of the 15. Very close. That's going to be a first down. Sure. Move the chains. Yeah. Gain of 12. There you go. And that's the kind of play we talked about. Just a quick in there. You know, and you, that six foot five target with those big mitts. He just pitch and catch. Nice easy catch there for Reifenberger. Uh, made the catch and and uh, move the stick. So Hastings has got things going so far early. I tried to be precise with the three step drop, but. Maybe we'll just say drop back next time. Easy for you to say. No score here. I do know how to say that part anyway. 9.20 to go. First quarter. We're live on KDWA. And also with our video feed online. Man in motion across the line. That's a jet. No, it's going to be a handoff up the middle, and it's Friar Muth. He'll gain three and a half. Yeah, that looked like a very promising to start out with, and then uh, Two Rivers closed the gap very quickly. We thought like, he's going to get about a five or six yard run up the gut, but uh, good job for Two Rivers closing that thing up and, and limited it to only basically a two and a half yard gain. That's okay though, because the Raiders now are sitting on the Two Rivers uh, 11 yard line, so we're so close to hitting Pater at this point, very early on in the game. Towards the left hash, spot the ball, now yeah, 11 we'll say, nearing the 10. Second down and seven for the Raiders. Out of the shotgun is Axel Arnold. Man in motion is Bezdecek. He'll take the jet this time. Step across the 10. Get down to the five. Takes a man down near the first down marker. We'll have to see where this ends up. Probably going to be a yard short, Jerry, and fans. Yeah, I'm guessing probably about a half yard short. I think you're right. Well, up there's a spot at the six, yeah. So uh -huh. it is a full yard short. 
uh, you know, again, that was a kind of a quick jet sweep there. is a quick handoff and trying to catch uh, Two Rivers sleeping, but they did a fairly good job of defending that, but uh, so the Raiders here are sitting at third and one. That's a good place to be. Your two backers, you being your quarterback and running back, each 6'2", over 200 pounds, you know what to do here. Yep, that's right. Pound <laughs> it in there. <laughs> I think we know what to do here. Plus two upbacks. Yep. Third, they say two. Oh, they're going to put a man in a screen. Instead, they're going to go Axel up the middle on the decoy, and it's going to be Axel down to the goal line. First down and a half a yard to pay dirt. Nice run. And that worked last week, too. Remember, Jerry, when we did the same thing with Friermuth? He started in the backfield and yeah. then worked out of his screen in motion, kind yeah. of an arena league motion, and that peeled off a couple of eyes, and that was enough for Axel to kind of get peel up the middle himself. Well, exactly. When you've got Friermuth lined up next to Axel and, and everybody's thinking he's going to get the ball because there, there are two up blocking backs, and uh, when he goes out to the side, a little motion to distract. You know, they weren't expecting Arnold to take the ball right up the middle. Close formation. From right outside the goal line, Arnold. He'll sneak it in. That's a touchdown. Touchdown, Raiders! Yes! Touchdown, Hastings! Exactly what the doctor ordered there. We, we needed. We told it at the outset of the broadcast here that uh, we had to get on the board early, and that's exactly what the Raiders did. They took took care of the ball. They got their maximized their chances, pushed it in, and now the Raiders are up 6-0 going for the extra point. That's kind of what we need. We, you know, we want to stay on top and now let our defense do its thing. 6-0. On for the extra point is Race Fillion, senior kicker. And now Fillion to boot it away. Extra point right to left, bad snap, spots good, kicks up, Reese didn't phase him. Seven nothing. And the Raiders have the lead here against Two Rivers on the road, and that is exactly how we wanted to start, Jerry. Well, and that's something there, too, that, that you don't see in the stats, but uh, nice job by Danny Milner getting that ball. It was a kind of a squibber back to him, but he picked it up off the turf and got it down and placed in a great position so Fillion could put that through. So kind of the unsung hero in that are the holders. Right. And, uh, you know, that's a nice job. By, you know, So we get a, a clean sweep there, get the seven points, and now we're kicking off again. Uh, again, we are with the wind in this first half here, so that's kind of nice. That's, it helps out our, you know, helps out Philly and get a little extra leg on it. Uh, he has put it in the end zone before in a couple other games, so he does have the leg uh, on occasion. And you know, this would be a perfect time to do it once again. Just, just boot it deep. Keep getting the job done in all phases. I mean, like Jerry said, little things in special teams can amount to such big keys at the end of the game. And, and right now, with what we saw Danny just do there. I mean, that saved a point, and we know in sectional games how much a point even could mean towards the end of a game, even against a team like Sibley, who always seems to give us fits, Jerry. Yep, that's right. Reese will kick it away. Special teams out there ready to go again. Reese right to left. Kind of a side-winding kick, but that's going to be a touchback, and how about that, Jerry? We'll take... The wind, and we'll take a touchback, and the Raider defense will come out for their second chance. The first chance was uh, pretty darn good. Yeah, you know, it's kind of interesting, too. You see different uh, alignment situations with the return team. Now, we went with only one a single back, that gives a lot of field to have to coverage for that, you know, that, that uh, deep back. And Reese just took advantage of the win and just pushed it to the left, and, and their man just couldn't get to it in time, and it rolled in the end zone for a touchback. So, you know, actually... <laughs> Last time they started the 18, this time they're at the 20, so they gained two yards in the next possession. But that's okay. That's where we want to put them. Coffee comes back out. Quarterback wears the number five. Raider defense out as well. Here is Hastings leading by a score of 7 to nothing. Man in motion across the line. Give us to the full back up the middle. And the Raiders get a hat on their best to check. Also joined in the party by LaFlave and Clemens, I should say. Clemens and Friermuth, yep, definitely had three guys in there. So they got a nice run on first down or two rivers. They got six yards in that pickup. They're trying to find something, too, that's going to work for them. And, you know, that was one of them going, okay, let's mark that play down as that was a win, and let's, let's uh, maybe come back to it again. Let's keep her going. Raiders defensively have been so good all season and need to keep that going here in the first quarter, 7.31 to go as a pass. Coffee out left side, caught on the slant. Nice little play there, jumping through a tackle there as well was number three, Carl Strohoffer. Yeah, nice job by Strohoffer on that one, and he just made a little move inside, spin move, and get, got himself a couple extra yards, and uh, they move the sticks for two rivers. 7-0 Hastings. It is a first down, first of which for two rivers today. 
And here under center is Coffey, man in motion out of the wing tee. Hand off up the middle, you're not going anywhere, it says Thomas Reifenberger, good night. That is a loss of uh, three, four, a semi-handful. And it'll be second down and about 11, they're gonna say. Not as huge of a loss as I thought, but a great tackle, great penetration. And that was a good job by Reifenberger. Thomas is staying home there and, and uh, he actually, wasn't quite sure what to do. He tackled the, the running back up at the shoulder pads. I was hoping he didn't horse collar him because he was so high up on him. But, uh, you know, it was a great job and a tackle for loss. Under center coffee. And that looked like they moved early. Yeah, didn't did. fool the Raiders. The giving chase pass put up. That's going to be overthrown. No flags on the field. But I, did you see I, well, movement everywhere, Jerry? Well, what I saw was... What made it look like movement was the run running back thought it was on two and it was actually on one. So he was still in his stance when the rest of the entire line was moving. So it kind of gave you the, the deceiving look that it was a, you know, a, a false start. But um, official didn't see it that way, incomplete pass. And now once again, Two Rivers is in a, a long passing position. You know, they're, they're third down and 11, so they've got a long ways to go. They've made a couple of passes here so far, but still it puts the pressure on them. Under center, Coffee again, first quarter, 6.28 to go with the Raiders leading 7-0. Coffee looking to pass, and he's going to pass. Yes, intercepted! Intercepted by Luke Charlton, and the Raiders will take the football back at the 45 of Henry Sibley. Big grab on defense by Hastings, and I know Luke Charlton would like to tote the ball or catch the ball on offense, but you know what? That defensive fun's pretty cool, too. Boy, that thing spelled disaster from the get-go. They had one man going out to the flats on the right side here, and he, he was triple coverage, basically, and Charlton was up underneath. The pass was slightly underthrown. It was basically thrown right to Charlton, so it was an easy pick for him. Uh, you know, bad design play, just goes south in a hurry, and now the Raiders take over on the Two Rivers 46-yard line. So once again, here we go. We're going downhill and, and hopefully in for another score to put this at 14-0. Back on Kenny WA, both audio and video. Nick Tucker, Jerry Rump, Hunter Pinky also here for the fun. He is operating our video as now the Raiders with the football and Axel Arnold, flushed right, has plenty of room. Might as well set up a nice block for him. Runs a guy over, runs into half the defense and Axel just does it smartly right side in front of his own bench and just trots for five and Jerry, you and I have said it all day today already. You get three, four, five, six in, on first down, I don't care who's the one running the football, we're going to take that to a win. Well, exactly, and, and you know, when you get that kind of yards on a first down, it totally changes the play calling that we that Cook is able to do it just mixes things up so much more you have so many more options and that last play there Arnold that was a quarterback run all the way he was faking or looking like he was going to throw but he planned on running that thing the entire time Raiders work the shotgun far right hash hand off to Fryer Muth first down and more 35 40 carries a man 25 to the 23 Big first down carry for Hastings, and again the big fellas up front doing the dirty work again. They gave him just enough of a seam, and Farmouth was smartly hesitated for about a second just to let things kind of clear out in front. The smoke cleared, he saw that path, and he went through the promised land there, and then he just did some bulwark. He put his head down and smacked that back corner. You talk about smoke clearing, that's the one thing maybe I don't like about Saturday games. The bonfires aren't going yet. That's true. Isn't that a good, I mean, that's always that, that. Like last night at Laney Field and Prescott, I smell bonfire all night. Oh, there was awesome. nothing better than that. Cards played their tails off against the number four team in the state. Lost 32-15, but played very well. They're going to go to playoffs in a couple weeks. Here's a pass on the left side, caught by Reifenberger, and then a break a tackle down to the 20, down to the 18-yard line. That should have been a gain of one, maybe two, if not at the line of scrimmage. And big Steven Reifenberger takes it inside the 20 into the red zone. Yeah, that could easily have been a tackle for loss because, uh, two Rivers had three men out here on the flats and they had that diagnosed very well but second effort and just smart play and the spin move by Steven Reifenberger got him an extra few yards. Um, you know sometimes that, that quick screen or quick pass works and sometimes they've got to defend it right and there's only one offensive man out there for blocking and you know it was a three on one but Reifenberger made something out of it. Second down four and a half left hash Raiders 
First quarter, 7-0 Hastings on the road on a beautiful day. Clouding up a little bit, but that just makes it feel a little nicer out here. Up the middle, <laughs> Friar Muth. He carried half the band with him for about five, enough for another first down. And that's what we like to see out of the Raiders. Tough, hard-nosed running. And right there, number one, giving us that and all of a, a bag of chips with it. Kind of half a chuckle there because for, you know, being a, a bull in a ring there, he tried to turn sideways and go invisible on everybody. He's like, Whoop. where'd he go? Oh, there he is, the number one. But that time he turned his shoulders square and then just pounded away for an extra few yards and got that first down. Hey, Petey and Riley, I just want to give you a heads up. We'll take you on the air anytime. That is absolutely hilarious. Hopefully you volleyballers are still listening to us today. I appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you, I think, next week, actually, on the radio. And here's Axel to pass. Throws it up in the corner for Reifenberger, and it's a touchdown! Touchdown, Raiders! Steven Reifenberger out jumps the D-back, and he has done that for almost three years. Oh, exactly. Now, here's the situation. Uh, like I said in the pregame, the D-back is 5'10". Reifenberger is 6'5 with big mitts. Gee, I wonder who's going to win that one 9 out of 10 times. I just looked over at Hunter, and I could read his lips, and he goes, that was pretty. <laughs> and, and, and I, I will give the two Red River credit. You know, that, that man, he fought to try to knock that ball out of Reifenberger's hands, but it was just not happening. He got the vice on it. Reifenberger's touchdown, making it 13 nothing. Snap a little high, pulled down. Reese kicks it halfway into Mendota Heights, and we have a 14 nothing lead here on KDWA as the Blue and Gold guys are continuing to have fun. And Jerry, just very impressive here with the boys doing their thing offensively, and better yet, the defense continuing to do what they've done all year. Yeah, on the offensive side of the ball, it's just been a very nice mix. You know, you've got Firemuth pounding it up the middle. You've had a couple of passes hitting Reifenberg twice, once out in the in, in the middle in the flats, and then a gun for that ca touchdown catch. We're just getting a lot of it. Oh, yeah. yeah that picture. Nick just showed a great picture here. It's awesome. He's going up for the ball. Just a, basically a jump ball is what it all it is. And, you know, 6'5 is going to beat 5'10 every single time. So the Raiders are sitting in a good position. You know, it's 14-0 with 356 to go in the first quarter. So that's really great for the Raiders. You know, we talked about getting out early and jumping up on top and then let your defense do their work. That puts two rivers in a very difficult situation now because ball control kind of has gone out the window. You need to get some scores and get them fast and try to get back in this game because if you don't, man, it's over. Steven Reifenberger has made defensive backs in the conference call him daddy for surely for two years and, and, and almost three. And that one right there was... Nothing short of all conference, if not all state material. This one will be taken at the five yard line. Yep, there's that end around back to the near side. Uh, Robinson takes it. We saw that on tape too, and a big hit near the sideline. <coughs> Excuse me, but we saw that play on tape a couple times that they're gonna like to, to try to open up the field on their, on their kickoffs, and the Raiders had none of it. No, and that's the thing, and, and when you're a disciplined team, and you talk about this, you know, the coaches do with the, with the uh, return team, or the, actually the, the kickoff team, you need to stay in your lanes. Each guy has a lane in about five yards he has to protect, and you don't want to converge too quickly. If you stay in your lanes, anything can be covered, and that's exactly what the Raiders did there. They saw that reverse, stayed in their lanes, and took care of it. Raider defense back out again. New quarterback in the game as well. We'll get to that in just a moment. The handoff's going to go nowhere. And again, guess who? Luke Charlton's been all over the field here today. I think he has been our defensive player of the game through the first quarter anyway. Yeah. As uh, in the game now, a quarterback is Johnny Eunice. He is a junior, six foot one sixty five. Where's the number fifteen? A little mix up there. Try you know try to mix it up on their end. You know, see if, if there's a good combination, some kind of a magical combination that the quarterback can create. And so why not give it a try? Let's hope the Raiders have some more defensive magic leading 14 nothing. Man in motion across the line. Fake the jet. Give it up the middle on the draw. That's nothing. And, and that tonight, today, this sun splash Saturday afternoon, that draw stuff is not working against this defense. I don't care what no. anybody says. And and that's the thing, you know, on the reverse side, what we saw a couple weeks ago, what was getting, just killing us was speed. And that's what we're seeing right now on the Raiders side of the ball. The defensive speed is so quick. They react, and even if they're out of position, they can react so quickly that what looks like a hole closes down very quickly, and they're just knocking on the door. And, and uh, so far, Two Rivers just has not been able to push through it. A run and a pass for touchdown for the Raiders here in the first quarter. They lead it here 14 0. Tackle Cancer Day in West St. Paul. And now back to pass. Left hander to it. I know he's slinging it that way. Oh, fumble. Ball came out. 
And they're going to say he was already down, and if he is down, that should be a first down. It too. is. They marked uh, forward wow. progress. So that was a very interesting end of the play there. Uh, you know, he was going to try to fight for more yards and was pushed backwards, but the, uh, the, the linesman over here decided that uh, they gave him forward progress at the catch, and all the extracurricular happened ac afterwards, and that could have gone either way, to be honest with you. But, you know, first down catch for, uh, you know, a good design play for Two Rivers, and now they are sitting on their own 38-yard line. So, you know, they put together a couple first downs here, but so far nothing that the Raiders really have to worry about. Kept it in front of them. Yes. And that's the best part of it. And here's a handoff on the jet this time. And Fryermuth is not going to let him go anywhere. That might be a tackle for loss, if not back to the line. And again, Fryermuth in space, both sides of the football. He has made some big plays here, whether it's running it or tackling. What's your favorite word there, subterfuge? I love subterfuge. There was That's a little bit of subterfuge one. going oh, there. A little yes. fake hand out here, fake hand off there, and, <laughs> and another guy got to go in the other direction. But uh, Farmers was having none of it. He's like, yeah, no, I know who you are. I see you with the pig skin. You're going down right now with a one-yard gain. You listen to my broadcast, don't you? Once Sometimes. in a while, yeah. I, kinda, <laughs> I sort of pay attention. You know. Especially when the hockey silliness comes uh -huh. and cheers on the way home from a swim meet. Here's the uh, pass again off left side from the lefty off the helmet. And a good job in coverage there for Hastings, too, as they had Aiden Sorensen out there. And we've seen Aiden come in, you know, in spurts. Remember, he had to fill in even as our yeah. kicker for a, a kickoff. I mean, uh, this kid is uh, able to play anywhere on the field, Jaron. He makes a big play there at corner. Well, and i tell you what, that could not have been timed more perfectly. I mean, uh, I'm sure the Two Rivers would have said, hey, that's pass interference. But, no, he made contact at the exact moment the ball got to the receiver, and he just he, he broke it up. Rangers might outdraw Sibley today. I'm not sure. Back to pass. Nothing is a sack. Rangers in the backfield with Tom Kennedy. And how many sacks has that young man had the last two weeks, Jerry? Tom Kennedy has been playing on fire the last couple of weeks, and he finally got through. He's been battling in the last few plays, and that was a huge tackle for a loss there with that sack. That puts him back at uh, fourth and 16. So the Raiders, again, are going to get very good field position with still a minute, <laughs> two, minute left in the yeah. first quarter. Minute left in the first quarter. As Jerry said, 14-0, all Raiders all afternoon so far. And I'm a happy radio guy, too. That's a short punt. And that's going to spin back, I bet, this way, too, the way that, oh, maybe not. It'll take a hop, won't go that far. It'll get it a little bit of a Sibley bounce, so I lied. To the 39 it goes. It looked like it was kind of going back. So it did. The tip, you think maybe it'd roll back the other way, but yeah. no, physics aren't going to be on our side this no, time. No, not today, not on this field. No. But, you know, it, it did. It looked like it was going to be a reverse spin to it and just kind of back up like kind of like a pool shot yeah. when you hit it low in that English and it kind of does, uh, you know, back it up, Terry. Yep. Put it in reverse, Terry. But no, it, it worked out for you know, two rivers there until the Raiders take over the ball at the 39-yard line. Uh, you know, getting waning seconds here of the first quarter, but it's been all, all hasting so far. And then when we take our first quarter break, we'll have breaks on both the video and the audio for you fans. And I'll steal Jerry's mic here at the end of the quarter, Jerry. So just a bulletin to you. <laughs> We're trying to figure it all out here, fans, while we do the audio and video. Here's a pitch out that's going to go nowhere. Friar, we tried to get out of there, but that's a great defensive play in the backfield by Henry Sibley Eric and Lale. slash two rivers. Yeah, Eric Lale was all over that one. He, he sniffed it out and, and uh, you know, we just didn't get the blocking on that one. That's that's a that's a play where you have to have that initial block at contact to spring him and it just didn't happen. So that was a nice tackle for loss by two rivers. Lale, a big senior, 6'2", over 200 pounds. And Rainers, we'll see if we get one more play off here, Jer, or not. When we come back, as at the end of the first quarter, it's 14 nothing Hastings on Kitty WA AM 1460 and FM 97.7. Bath Fitter is North America's leading acrylic bathroom company. Bath Fitter offers top quality customized bathroom renovation products and services with a lifetime warranty. Why spend tons of money? Not to mention grueling hours on bathroom remodeling. Bath Fitter offers a bathroom remodeling solution that lasts a lifetime. Done in just one day, call today at 651-925-8636 for a free consultation with an experienced staff member or go to their website, bathfitter.com. 
Your Hastings Perkins in the Midtown Shopping Center is currently temporarily closed due to a fire. This is only temporary. During this time, they are working diligently to reopen as soon as possible. The staff at Hastings Perkins wants to thank the community for their outpouring of support and can't wait to see you all again soon. Perkins Family Restaurant, Midtown Hastings. Midstay Plumbing, Heating, and Sirs in Hastings for all your services and needs. Whether it's residential or commercial, there are experienced in full service plumbing and heating, air conditioning, and they even have a great reputation for getting the job done on time. If you're looking to remodel or need a repair, upgrading your furnace, or need a new software, they can get you covered and call Midstay Plumbing Heating at 651-438-1195 for all your plumbing and heating needs. Thank you. All right, I think we got it, folks. Back on KDWA and video. Snap to Axel, third and forever. And a pass on a screen. Going to Bez, but that's not going far at all. Uh, we're going to have to punt for the first time today, Jer. But, you know, hey, it was kind of a busted uh, a busted drive. Just going to have to chalk this one up as uh, we'll get you later. Yeah, you know, that last play of the first quarter probably should not have been played. They should have just taken it, just waited for the quarter to change over. I think uh, I actually think Arnold wasn't ready for it. I think he was thinking that the could clock be. was going to expire. And I also think that it was creative play clock by the staff here because that horn went off well after the the uh, clock had expired. Is the, isn't the horn not supposed to go off though uh, in the yeah, middle of the play? But, but they, yeah, they did it. Right? Alright, well here we go. We're going to have to punt this thing. It's blocked. It's blocked and it's going to be a safety. Raiders will punch it out. It'll be a safety. Better than a touchdown. Wow, that was something. And and once again, the guy we had just mentioned a couple plays earlier, Eric Leo, was in on that one as well. He's had a heck of a game his last couple plays here. Uh, got in there, got the block, and he thought he was going to get down for that uh, the, the score in the end zone. But uh, I don't know, it turned into a, a soccer match there, and they kicked the ball out. But I'm so, not I'm not mad about that, Jared. No. I mean, I, I mean, it could have been that. That's not yeah. worst case scenario. No, so. I mean, yeah, it could have been seven easily because they had uh, two rivers had two men right there that could have fallen on the ball and it just got kicked out of the end zone on purpose. Who knows? But anyway, it's a safety, and so. Raiders are still leading 14 to 2. Kind of going to be a weird box score now, but um, so Raiders now will have to boot it away from their 20-yard line and hopefully get a good kick on it and uh, you know shut down uh, Two Rivers in their next possession. So the Raiders give up the two, but like we said, it just throw the defense back out there and. For the most part, just do what you've been doing. Well, and that'd be nice if the Raiders defense said, hey, I want a piece of that. Let's, let's see what we can do on our side and maybe create a defensive turnover and, and uh, you know, get some points out of it. Scoop and score would be fun. Good to call on a highlight reel. I would, yeah, I was just going to say, I'd have a lot of fun doing that. Oh, yeah. I know Jerry would as well. And want to thank everybody for tuning in per usual here on a, like we said, sun splash, just gorgeous day oh, here in West St. Paul. It is. Raiders will try to get this thing going defensively again. A little longer kick, as Jerry mentioned, of course. And the kick by Reese in the air. will be taken right around the 33 of Sibley. Back to the 40. Shakes a man off, 45. And that's where they'll start. So they'll have 55 yards to go to pay dirt. But I'd almost rather have my defense out giving up only two as opposed to giving up, uh, you know, the six, seven, eight, whatever could have happened. And this now is the uh, best field position that uh, tours have started. I mean, they've been down on their 20 or, or worse the entire game. So starting out at the 45-yard line, that's a good starting position for them. Yes. Reifenberger, that big touchdown catch. Axel Arnold, a run of a one-yard touchdown. And that's where we're at right now here in the second quarter. And now here is the handoff that will go up. Fumble! And the Raiders get the football! Fumbled football. Hastings has it. And on the ball is Johnny Chorlton. He also had some help behind him from Danny Milner, excuse me. That was exactly what the Raiders <laughs> needed. First play and, and get that fumble. And, you know, that's the thing. It wasn't very sure-handed by the uh, Two Rivers running back, and, and uh, Raiders made it, took advantage of that. So now, just like that, Raiders take the ball in the Two Rivers 45-yard line, and they're looking to go the other direction for a score. 
So after the safety, the Raiders get a huge turnover. Go defense, do it again, let's go! 14 to 2. And no, we're not doing a crazy baseball game or a lacrosse game. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, sometimes you know, the scoreboard and go, oh, and like Jerry said, it's going to be a little weird score maybe the rest of the game. But here's Hastings back out again, gun. Two receivers left. They're going to hand off to Fryermuth running left, trying to get the edge, and he had it. And that's going to be a penalty. Raiders had holding Johnny Charlton at a handful of jersey around the neck. And the Academy Award goes to Mr. Eric Lale. He, I, that was not. You a don't hold. think he, so? No, I don't think that was a hold. He was getting pushed out of the way, and he put his hands up trying to get an acting job, and, he, and they, they bought his performance for an Academy Award. So, you know, that's going to be a 10 yard penalty for the Raiders. Uh, puts him back a bit. Still first down, though, you know, first and 20. Um, yeah, I'm sure the coaching staff over there kind of said, hey, come on. At the 20, or sorry, at the 45 yard line. On the Hastings side, 45 yard line. So it's a first and 20. So, you know, you don't have to get it back in one shot. Let's get two or three plays here. Just kind of move it down and get within uh, striking distance of the first down. 14 2 Raiders, 10 54 to go here in the first half, second quarter. Handoff goes to Fryermuth, up the middle, 50, finds room, 45, stiff arms a man to the 40, down to the 35, did he get that first down? You better believe he did, didn't he? It's right at the stick. Raiders are signaling I it from our it's side. Just Maybe a half, half a yard yep. short. You're right, Jer. I half think he's a half, yeah, half Okay, yard. so everything I just said, never mind. First down? Get it all in one shot. No, same, you don't have to get it all back in one play. No. Well, I guess you can that, too. No. I mean, that works. I mean, yeah. That was pretty. Yeah, it was. Very nice job in getting over there and tickling the sideline there and, and doing a little tight walk dance there. But now it's second and less than a yard. I just love when he gets into space. Because oh, yeah. like I've said before, like his touchdown run last, last week, he looks like a deer just galloping. Yep. You know, just finds room and off he goes. 14-2 Raiders, second and very short. We'll just take it and churn it up the middle with seven, and he'll do his job. And Axel Arnold, his basketball player frame, will... Get through there for a first down and about four yards more than that. Yep, nice, nice five-yard gain there in total. So it moves the sticks. First down on the Two Rivers 30-yard line. So that's that's a nice job. Raiders are moving the ball, and you know it's nice too that they can keep the ball on the ground, keep the clock moving. I mean, obviously we're in a ball control situation now where we can control this this game. You know the outcome so far. Just keep it on the ground and keep that clock ticking. Keep it out of the Two Rivers' hands. Just keep her going, like Jerry said. Keep going in the positive direction more than anything, and the Raiders have done that thus far in the game. It's going to be first down and 10. Raiders will give up the middle again, and there's Fryermuth. He jumped into a tackle, and then he carries half of everybody. Keeps going with everybody on his back. He just carried about, what, 18 guys for nine yards? I mean, talk about tough running, Jerry Rupp. That's tough with a capital T. You know, and you've got the bulldozers behind you, that offensive line that's got pretty beef to him for the Raiders, and he just they, he got in, in front of them, and then he just bulldozed them forward. That was a classic rugby scrum where the thing just kept moving down and down and down and down, and now it's down to the 21-yard line of two rivers. So, you know, they're giving up some chunks of yards. I'm not going to say that I don't appreciate the sunshine, but since the clouds have moved in, Jer, hasn't this made it even more beautiful? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh it, it's gosh. more comfortable, I'll say <laughs> it's that. so nice out now. Second down and a yarn for the Raiders, another second and short opportunity. Out of the shotgun, Raiders with Arnold left hash, hands off, Fryermuth got enough, falls ahead. That's what we gotta do, fall ahead. I mean, it's so smart, three yard gain, first down. Well, in the, in the situation, when you talk to football coaches, and I remember playing football, when our offensive coaches or defensive coaches would say for this matter, they right. say, look, run the same play till they figure out how to stop it. And that's exactly what they've done. They've run three plays, exact same plays between the guard and the tackle, and they're just saying, hey, we're going to keep hitting here till you figure out how to stop us. Didn't we win a state championship doing that? We might have. <laughs> With the beer? Come on now. Here we go. First and ten, Raiders left hash. Ball inside the 20, called the red zone. Another trip. As a handoff to Fryermuth, breaks a tackle, gets down to the 15, 13, 12, around there, and that'll be second and about four. So what I like about that play with Fryermuth is that it was, again, the same hole he was going to hit, but all of a sudden, whoops, it's closed. So rather than just putting his head down and just trying to bowl ahead, he was smart enough to bounce off and go out to the right and try that side, and everybody had converged to the left, and so he was out there and got a couple extra yards just by finding some open space. Create your own destiny. And we have been doing that all first half, except for the one little hiccup on the snap that actually turned out to be a best-case scenario. Out of the shotgun, Rainers in the red zone. 
Trip right now is into the 13-yard line. Handoff will go to Dowdy. He'll cut back in. Find room. Down to the 10, down to the 5, 6, we'll say. He got a first down, though. Move the chains, first and goal, Raiders, and we're creeping on that red end zone again, Jer. Some uh, same kind of play that uh, we're running Farmouth with, and, and with Dowdy, the nice thing there was that there was a little over-pursuit by two rivers. They were there in position, but they just kind of out ran past him and he turned sideways again did that little zippity zoop and got through there and got an extra five yards zippity zoop is also in that same vocabulary as, as some of those words you were talking about that's right earlier. chicanery, too. chicanery. And, uh, subterfuge plethora uh, yeah. i've got that from dick as well I like that yeah that works he's up behind us i'm not sure if we're going to have him at halftime or not we'll figure it out uh the shotgun Back to pass. Axel right over through. He had two guys. He probably could have got yeah. it to it. Johnny B over his shoulder. Rico back corner, and he threw right between the two of them. So now we're going to have second down and goal from the seven. And that's that's a situation that the, the uh, receiver coaches will go back to Johnny B and say, you quit on your route. You've got to keep going. Right. You know, he, he took us. He basically tried to sit down. you got, you got to keep going in your route. Do not quit on it. And so when Axel went to throw, he threw where he thought Johnny B would 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 be, but he wasn't. And, and like you said, Rico was back in the corner, kind of wide open too. So two choices there. That's okay. It's still second goal. Really cool to see a lot of those, if not all those folks that were in that Warrior Pride deal come on over to the stadium. It's a really fun atmosphere here now today on a Saturday. Handoff down. He spins away and spun away. Got a half yard maybe. So now we're looking at third and goal. We're not even to the five. We're right around the no. same spot. If maybe not lost a half a yard. Two either. Rivers is doing like my favorite beverage. They're getting stout. Ooh, yum. <laughs> maybe one. They, they have oh, maybe man, one. I don't know about that. I well, just it's like breakfast. I just want to throw it in yeah, there. Yeah. Okay. No, they're, 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 <laughs> I mean, Two Rivers has has tightened up here on on their own end zone. They're do, definitely defending. Do you use the tall guy here? I mean. I don't right. know why I mean, you one wouldn't. on one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in, inside out, just a, a, a zag, yeah. zigzag and throw it to the corner. Third and goal from the seven. Snap. Oh, Axel's going to be weak. And he's got him in the slot. Touchdown, Raiders. You, you know, I tell you what, Nick, you, you had the right idea there. And I think uh, Trevor Rivers was thinking the same thing. They're going with Reifenberger in a corner for that long catch. And so they kind of were shading toward the right over there to kind of cover Reifenberger. And Rico just did a nice move, got in between the scene on a nice, easy slant. Pitch and catch, touchdown. Seven yard score. Fillion on for the extra point try. Right-footed senior booter. We'll start soccer playoffs Tuesday. We don't have seating. We do, and we know that they'll be on the road. Here's a kick that's up and good. And it's 21-2. Raiders with the lead. And we're getting to that point too, Jerry, where, where we got to start talking about playoffs. And I know you with the swim team, you gave us a nice update that I actually got to take a couple cuts out for this week too with the Farmington and uh, uh, th th that stuff too. But you guys also had senior night and really um, had a lot of fun Thursday. What a cool deal for the kids and, and just to come out and do what they did uh, and the seniors especially to have some fun. Well, yeah, and we had luau night. So, I mean, <laughs> you should have seen the pool. Was, first of all, we had, uh, you know, we have sports uh, uh, cooperative so where we have a different team come like the, like partners I love so the cross country team came and supported us that was really cool to see them there but <laughs> everybody had floral shirts on they were wearing the, the lays and yes. you know, we had the pool all decorated up we had you know all sorts of lays everywhere and <laughs> it was kind of a fun little uh, you know atmosphere we had North St. Paul come in you know they're, they're kind uh -oh. of down you know they only have 13 kids on their team and so um, it was it was just kind of a you know really we mixed a lot of things up and and uh, we had I think uh, three divers that are actually swimmers that got up there and dove, so that was kind of That's something awesome. different. Oh, and yeah, and so uh, you know, uh, Ash and Stewart are all can do everything. You know, she broke 200 <laughs> points in the six dive list, which is awesome. So you know, we just we had a lot of fun with that whole deal, and and it's just cool to see, like I said, having the cross country kids there and just some support from other students is it makes the those girls day when when they see that so proud of the girls and they're going to have fun and likely to win the suburb uh, the suburban east listen to where i am Close enough. metro east conference east championship i mean where am i my goodness i mean over okay over 20 years i've had uh, my first year was still st paul suburban, suburban. then yeah. we went to metro east yeah. or no then we went to SEC. suburban east and then we went to metro east yeah, yeah. and it's like you know 
Well, we're still oh trying God. to teach the girls where the schools are from because in the last two weeks... <laughs> the Sibley and Sibley thing well, always no, gets the kids, too. Here's the thing. La- last week, they said St. Paul Packers. I'm like, what? Where? It's South St. Paul. This <laughs> week, they went St. Paul Polars. I'm like, uh, no, it's North, you ding dongs. Well, yeah. it doesn't work. Oh, brother. Well, we, 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 we can make it work, yeah, right? So I mean, just you just need to say it quicker. Sing it, sing it quicker. Say yeah. it quicker. We'll make it work. Yeah. I mean, the, the other team's going, what? <laughs> St. <laughs> Paul? Do they not know anything? Come on, yeah, we've been in the well. conference for, what, six, yeah, seven exactly. years now? We'll, yeah, we'll work on it with them. <laughs> Excuse me. Ah, look, everybody. Up. Forgot I have two mics. i got to cover up the other oh, one. Details. Too. Details. 21-2 Raiders. Race Fillion's kick is end over end. Then I'll be taken up the middle and off the right side by Strohoffer, and he's not going to go anywhere because the Raiders special teams unit, led by Benny Clemens, who doesn't care what wow. unit he's playing on, and also Thomas Reifenberger, who's a machine. And Charlton. Or, I mean, oh, i, I got to tell you something. Okay, I, I've been watching Thomas Reifenberger's posture the last couple weeks. I'm going to take you back a little bit. There was a guy who was an outside linebacker, actually who I, I happen to know very well. His name was Mark Dusbavik. Oh, sure, played for the Vikes. He, yes, he did. He yep. came He came from Faribault, played for the Gophers, played for the Vikes. Reifenberger's stance is a lot like Dusbavik. And he was a guy that could hit so hard, too. That was oh. the thing I remember about Mark yes. Dusbavik more than anything. He could stick. And he had kids, too, that were really good, if I remember right, too. That Didn't he have kids that ended up playing somewhere down I, the You line? know, I'm not sure. He married Asha Blake. She was from Centennial, right, right. and she went on to NBC. They moved to Detroit, and it yeah. could be. But, yeah, yeah, he, yeah he was, and he was a heck of a guy. I mean, I, I met him in high school through another friend in college, and uh, just, just a class act. One of my favorite police officer football cards that I ever got was my Mark Duspotic card. Actually, by the way, it's kind of a funny tie-in. I wish they'd still do that. Remember the cops who give away those yep. cards? Here's a pass put up Uh-oh. left side and deep. And he th- overthrows Strohoffer. The play was there. Yep. Milner was close, but the throw uh, definitely over the head. Um, but yeah, it's going to be third down and ten here, but uh, <laughs> third down. Yeah, it should yeah, be third should down, be third right? Down. Yep, it should be third it's down. The, the scoreboard a little bit ba- yeah. off. That that that's one thing that I I would love, and I don't know if May- Mayor Mary's listening or maybe even um, our wonderful police chief, uh, Mr. Schaefer. Let's get those pl- let's get those football cards back. I, I just I just think that was such a cool integration between kids and the police. Oh, totally, that's yeah. a great connection for yep. them. That's a great idea. So much fun. I loved doing that back in the day, going up and having a chat with one of our local finest. Here's a pass off his back foot, over through it. See, as a lefty, you can't go to the right and try to throw Jer. I mean, even I know playing, you know, flag football on Turkey Day, uh, you just can't go throw that ball. I mean, off, you're, you're always going to be uh, a little bit off the mark, so unfortunately for that young man, it'll force fourth down. Yeah, on a run like that, you are going to tend to float it, and especially yeah. with your when you're with the wind, that makes it even worse of a situation with floating your way in. You know, Two Rivers did a good job of trying to get up there for the ball, but it was just a little bit over his head. Fourth down, 5.59 to go. This has kind of been a slow-moving second quarter. Kick here, knuckleball. Raiders have time. Bez takes it, 38, 40, 45 right, near midfield, 49 is where he's taken out. That's fine with me, 50 yards to Peter. We can get another one before half, Jer. Yeah, they, they definitely could with five minutes and 50 seconds left in the second quarter. They, they could definitely walk it down the field. See what happens here. Bez gives the ball to our near side official. Trying to find him at first. He's, <laughs> he's looking around going, he wanted to hand the ball to somebody. It's like, uh, Mr. Zebraman. Huh? Oh, yeah, th- there you are. He tossed it back to him. This is the one game, Jer, where if, uh, you know, you know, if I was in high school football right now, I, I would have bought that, that cool... Uh, oh, black yeah. shade, the, yeah. eye, the eye shade for, yeah. you know, I would have had that the for today. The black patches on there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would have been kind of cool. I, I remember you were talking about old Vikings yeah. and Al Noga. Remember Al Noga, oh, 99, yeah. big Al Noga? He wore that big black uh, thing over the over the, the eye shield, the too, visor, and it just yeah. made him look so, you know what, bad, yeah. Yeah, you know, in a good way. Yeah, here's a handoff now as Fryermouth up ahead gets across midfield. There we go. Nice gain on first down. We'll bring up second and about four. Okay, on that play right there, uh, you know, we've been looking at that veer or uh, the, uh, yeah, the veer to the left, and now this time we went to the right, so Fireman tried the other side of the line, and, and uh, gosh, it worked there too, so now they have options to go either veer right or veer left. Both plays are working. That's nice that the Raiders can do that. You know, keep the clock ticking down here. They're moving the ball. They can get a third or actually a fourth score before the first half. Owen Glade has had a game today at yeah. right tackle, too. He yeah. has just been fantastic. 
when they've been going to that right side. 67's been in the way every time. Pass out left side. Good hit! Raiders have a chance to the 10! And then he's down there. And it's going to be Johnny Bezdecek on the reception of the gainer. First down back inside the red zone again. Jerry, we're talking about scoring before the end of the half. They might just do it. They're going to spot him right around the 12. But it is another trip into the red zone in a 21-2 lead. Very fortuitous for the Raiders. That could have gone either way because the pass was a little underthrown. Uh, Bezicek had to kind of hold up for the ball to get there, and I thought the Two Rivers defender was right in a good position, but Bezicek came up with the catch and, and uh, for extra yardage, and here we go. Raiders are first, first and 10 from the 12-yard uh, line. Raiders come back out. Arnold, the quarterback. And he will hand off. Firemuth across the 10, to the 5, to the 4, and that's where he's down. Raiders can get a first down before scoring, which is the good news. <laughs> Another guy that's really doing a good job for the Raiders right now is Jacob Blando Bleed. You oh know, man, he's in there and last he's, two weeks. Yeah, he's Ooh. plugging away there, and and he's doing a great job on that right side guard, and and, and Benny Witt also. Those two are working in coordination. Mm -hmm. Ben's been working really well with both guards on either left or right side, and they're just blowing up some holes. Jacob Lando Bleed. The last two weeks, he has been awesome. Out of the gun, Raiders just outside the goal line, knocking on the door in a 21-2 lead. On a Saturday afternoon, handoff goes up the middle, and the Raiders are in again as Friermuth finds the end zone. And that is a run of what, five there, Jerry? Uh, I believe it was four. Four to be exact. I want to get the exact scoring, but the Raiders have the lead 27 2. You know, and right now, the Raiders' offensive, all the players on the offensive side, they're just putting, as, as Coach Hartman used to say, put a hat on a hat. Yep and cover somebody up and, and uh, let your skill position do what they do. Four yard run for Friermuth and that'll bring Philly in back out. Snaps good, spots good, Ooh. kicks up and that one's on the roof of the school. It's in there. Yep. And it's 28 to two with the Raiders leading here. And Reese has really looked good, especially, you know, the first three snaps weren't exactly fantastic. No. Nope. And each of those first three got down. That one was perfect, and the kick was perfect. And, you know, we've really had in, in, in some great luck ever since the Raiders started going to bringing soccer players in. Yeah. And, and it's not a bad idea. And I know, you know, for years it was kind of, you know, full potty, use a you know, soccer guy on the football field, you know, that kind right. of thing. But it, it, it became kind of weaponry. I mean, it, 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 I think Coach Majeski said, hey, you know, this Danny Jorgensen kid that can kick the ball about Seriously. 90 yards from the goal mouth in soccer, uh, why don't we try to bring that stuff to football? Yeah. And, and ever since then, the Donnie Manns, the Kevin Saunders, you get on the line to some of these guys, Reese Fillion uh, keeps it going, C.J. Brenny, uh, Simon Hadeen. It's a tradition now, and these kids are awesome and they have become a weapon for us, Jer. Oh, exactly. Yeah, tying that in, I just started watching Ted Lasso last night. I with, still haven't watched that oh yet, goodness. you guys. Yeah, we, it looks so like... We what binged it? five in a row. Oh. It's, 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 it starts oh. slow, but it's so good. And oh. just watching the English English football, right. you know, versus <laughs> American football. And it's just, it's hilarious. If people, if you have not seen that, you got to get on that. Now, That's hilarious. What, does he have an English accent or what? No, I mean, he's, is it? he's from the uh, Wichita State Shockers. Oh. Oh, for crying and out loud, he gets the hired, He gets hired by this Premier League <laughs> soccer team yes. in, in England. And the, <laughs> what the English slang stuff, it's just hilarious. Oh, I can't wait. Jerry and I are going to have to compare notes at the end of the weekend because they know what Tuck's doing later on this weekend. Here's a return near near side. It's going to be the uh, really do-it-all guy here so far oh. for... That's going to be a late flag, too, yep. isn't it? Yep. That's yep. Carl Strohoffer, and he got hit out after the play. Yeah, yeah. Clay Karras, that was kind of a weird tackle he put on him, and uh, we'll see how this call goes, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be against the Raiders. Nice return by Two Rivers. Uh, they got out to the 36-yard line. That's the best return they've had on their own all half. I'm just, I'm, I'm just looking at that team right now and saying they're not giving up. Now that's the one thing. They're down 28 to 2 right now. I think they picked the flag up because they have not moved either, either direction. They must have picked it up and decided right. maybe it wasn't a horse collar. It looked like it was going to be a horse collar tackle, but I don't but, think but, so. But, but, like we were saying, though, I mean, even on that return, you're seeing these guys. I mean, they're not going anywhere. I mean, even in the second half, this team's going to be coming back and, and want a little something. They're trying. Yep. They're not going to go away. Raiders just got to keep making plays. Here's a handoff on the jet out right side and finding an edge. And for a first down carry, Ozzie Robinson. He, 
you know, he's got a little shake to yeah, him. When he, he gets outside, well, he's kind of dangerous. And, and i tell you what made that play from the get-go was Two Rivers' offensive line. They did a job. I mean, they got in there, and they pushed our men off the ball so we could not get any penetration. That gave their back chance to get out there and get that corner, and that was a nice run play for Two Rivers. If you're the Raider defense and Coach Strain, you don't want him to score here before nope. half either, even though you do get the ball. Here comes Robinson near side now, toting the rock. Oh, boy, and he got taken. That's a yeah, flag. Took him down on his head. No flag. No flag at all. Now the, 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 Shoulder uh, pad. Yeah, the side judge was right there. He would, he had a very clear view of it, so uh, their, their back wants to come out. He's tapping his helmet, going, I need a, little, need a blow here. I think he had a little, little twisted up there. He's kind of walking yeah. just a little gingerly. But, yeah, that would, that could have been a horse collar tackle. It was it was close. I mean, it wasn't, but, you know, if, if the official wasn't paying close attention, he could have called it that way. Critzberg will check in now. Give Robinson a second to stretch out with the trainer there. And he will give the ball, actually, to one of the tailbacks. Goldenman, kind of a big guy. He wears the number 11, yeah. almost looked like... Reifenberger running the football. Yeah, and again, you know, Two Rivers offensive line in this drive has been doing the job. They're, they're out there and, and, and pushing our Raiders back. I think our Raiders need to uh, remember there's two minutes and 45 seconds left in this first half. You need to finish. You, that's the problem we had last week at South St. Paul. You need to finish. Find a way. 234 clock is running. Raider defense and shows blitz, and they come in for the Oh my goodness, Meyer with a great hit and he covers up the fumble himself. That is one of the best hits you will ever see in high school football. Very nice job by the Raiders getting that, that penetration right away. It was kind of like a jailhouse break in there coming after the quarterback and, and the wide receivers were covered so he couldn't chuck the ball early. There was nowhere to throw and he just got smoked. And you know, from that backside, that's what happens. You get hit blindside, nine times out of 10, you're gonna cough up that football. That's exactly what happened. And Meyer was right on top, but smacked him in the back of the pads and fell on that ball. We've had some guys the last few years that can do that kind of stuff. Yeah. And that was one of them. I think about Trey Petrich a couple of years ago. Oh, <laughs> Coming from Look the edge. Out. And That's a train wreck. Trying <laughs> to hurt somebody. Not trying to hurt somebody, but no. he was trying to hurt somebody, if you know what I mean, folks. I mean, he just hit hard. That was very reminiscent of 4 2. Out of the shotgun. Rainers with the football. Handoff will go to Friar Muth left. Finding room a little bit, then cuts up along the seam. It keeps rolling. He might have a first down. Yeah. Talk about patient running by Friar Muth. I think he can, wow, well, boy, it's going to be a half yard short. And, and I tell you what, he, it was a smart run because he was looking for that veer right off the bat and it didn't go. And he had Thomas Reifen back out there clearing out so he could cut back up inside. Oops, what are we doing there? Oopsie. Hurry up offense and we. Yeah. Uh, What's the snap count, coach? Now that was tight end pushing. Whatever it was, yeah. it wasn't that. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie. Tommy Reif got up close and personal one of his linemen and said, oh, we, uh, we weren't supposed to go on one? Okay. Uh, Carson Tui got a little excited too there. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> no, sorry to call your name, big guy, in a bad way, but what? that's okay. We're, you know, yeah. things happen. That's all right. I mean, I remember when I used to be a center. <laughs> Every time I go to the ball, it's like, okay, was it on one or two? I forget. That's Boy. not a good thing for the center to not no. snap count. No. A little two slaps on the backside. Yep. There's a handoff to Friar Moth. He'll find the edge. First down and more to the 35 33. And the Raiders keep the clock. No, they're going to stop the clock here, looks like. Did he get out of bounds? I don't think he did. They have to stop the clock to For reset it. Surely the to first reset it, yeah. yeah. I didn't I, know if he nope, could. They're if he winding did, it up. There we go. Yep. Okay. So, a minute 36 to go. Out of the gun, Raiders hurry it up. Axe to pass, looks right, looks deep. Looks for Bez, has Bez to check 15. 10 five, touchdown Raiders! Bez to check, 34 yard touchdown catch. Nearing the end of the first half, 34-2 Raiders. Nice nice ball thrown there by Arnold. He's kind of thrown into just a little bit of a breeze, but laid it out there for uh, Bez to check and it was to the outside, so the D-back did not have a chance to uh, play on the ball. He just waited for it to come in once again and just use his foot speed to outrun the uh, Two Rivers defender and get in the corner of that end zone. Just tiptoed down the sideline and found that pylon. I hope I didn't jinx Reese with the whole 4-for-4 four four <laughs> thing. Here he comes. I don't think he's paying attention. I hope he's not. If he's, if he's got me wired up, I want that helmet. I know. <laughs> Here's the snap coming up here. That's good. Danny Spot, perfect. That a boy. Prove me wrong. Yeah, a boy. Through there again. 25-2. Raiders. Race is 5 of 5. 
Okay, so uh, yeah, Jer, this is um, this is fun. This is exactly what we want, yeah, this and is maybe uh, and more. I, I, I think that you and I both know, and we weren't blowing smoke up anybody's uh, nose when we were talking about you know this could be a closer game than anybody expects, and the trap game thing. But the Raiders said trap game. You two can take that trap game and and send it to White Castle up the road here. Yeah, I, you know, and, and in the in the number of years I've been doing this with you, it's always been the Raiders have kind of found a way to maybe keep it too close. Well, yeah, too close to their competition. Yeah. And, and today they're actually doing what they're what they should be doing, which is opening it up and, and taking care of business right away. So, you know, I mean, there's a reason why Two Rivers is 0 and 5. You know, they're they're a little bit down on talent and they're struggling a little bit here, but. You know, of course, the Raiders are taking advantage of that. And when you're playing game time, that's what you have to do. I mean, you can be good kids, you can be class individuals, but when it comes game time, that clock goes, you got to pound them. Have to. The Raiders that's right the, now are doing that. Is. Yeah. Raiders leading 35 to 2. Second quarter, first half, 124 to go. Raiders will get the football to start the second half, and I'll tell you what, got to find a way to wind that clock down the second half, Jerry. That's kind of what the Raiders are going to want to do. because, And it's not just like, hey, let's go home and let's win and let's let's go. It's a matter right now at this point of the year of saving your bullets yeah. for the next game. I mean, right. I mean, get, let's go in the second half, let's do our thing, run the clock, and, and get to Thursday. Yep. Oh. He, he was on his knee, yep. and he caught that ball. Yep, the kickoff was taken on a knee at the 11 or so. I'm guessing it's a shortstop. Well, right, right, think about that. He went down in a shortstop right. position to field a ground ball. Okay, okay, now, okay, I, I know how good of an athlete Strawhoffer is, but I can't remember if he plays baseball across campus or not. Oh, my gosh, Jerry, I'm going to be thinking the whole Look game. So, so we're sitting up here at the top of the stands, right. just in front of the press box, and we're right. looking out. What a beautiful field that is over there, that outfield, and the, just the whole baseball right. complex. Right. Gosh, that's gorgeous. Between this and then the, 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 yeah. the varsity softball field and yeah. then the B-Squad softball that's field, awesome. at the backdrop is absolutely beautiful. And if you look over to the right, you could be in the top uh, spot here and look over at the uh, the tennis courts, too, as this yes. uh, handoff is going nowhere left side. I might get a couple yards, but I think more than anything, Coach Orth wants to tick out the final seconds of this first half. Yeah, just get out of here and, and, and just kind of regroup, go back over there in the, in the, uh, the shed and figure out what's going on. Like we're saying, too, not only do you have those facilities, but, you know, they built a brand-new swimming pool, yep, yep. eight-lane facility. They built a new basketball arena. Right. I tell you what, Two Rivers, this district, has done a great job of updating their badly needed help for their athletic facilities. And it helps the kids, and it keeps the kids here, too. Yes. You know, you might not want to go to St. Thomas up the road or whatever it might be. And a handoff here is going to catch Robinson in the backfield. Oh, my goodness. That's a lot of whole extra activity Oof. for, uh, I don't know if he got a yard. It might have been no gain there. Tommy Kennedy again. Oh, he was juking and jiving and <laughs> trying to find something, but it just wasn't happening because the Raiders were like a, like a nest of hornets that got slapped. You know, they were everywhere. Tom Kennedy helping for his third down and nine. And they're just going to try to run this clock out here. I don't see a play clock here. I think they're going to just... Eight seconds left. Yeah, this is it. probably going to do it for the half fans. So uh, what we will do, we'll take a break on the radio. We'll take a break on video. And Jerry will probably go get some popcorn. And I hopefully you fans do as well. Yeah, I, dude, I, I, I saw it. Well, you know what? I think it was I think it was a food truck. Maybe it is down there, but I saw that guy come in with a full, it looked like a full uh, wood fire pizza or something like that. Goodness. Well, Jerry and I will talk about pizza as you guys will uh, listen to a couple of words from our awesome Sportscasters Club sponsors and many, many more. The Raiders lead at halftime. The score is 35 to 2. Hastings leading on KDWA AM and FM. We'll be right back, fans.
for pizza that doesn't disappoint, choose Domino's of Hastings. When you order Domino's, you're not ordering the same old, ordinary pizza. You're ordering a pizza with an oven-baked crust, marinara sauce handcrafted from only the best tomatoes, and a yummy collection of toppings. Be sure to check them out online for their ever-changing lunch and dinner specials. Or give Domino's a call at 651-437-3930. Stop in today at Domino's, located at 103 West 23rd Street in Hastings. Green Mills Pizza Takeout and Delivery Special is a large two-topping pizza on Classic Ben, Old World Style, or Pescara Crust, and an order of wings for $19.99. You call the shots on the toppings and we'll do the rest. This takeout and delivery special is sure to please. And for a limited time, you can add a garlic cheese bread for only $5 more. Your Hastings Green Mill is located in Schoolhouse Square on Vermilion <laughs> Street. Green Mill is the place to be for happy hour. Join us twice a day for excellent happy hour prices and good times. The EPA has banned the use of R22 Freon in new AC units in 2010. As a result, if you have an AC unit 2010 or before, you'll be faced with hard to find Freon and crazy high prices. At Comfort by Design, we're here to help. We are not only starting AC maintenance services early this year, but we also lowered our prices. We want to make sure you are taken care of before temperatures and prices rise. So give us a call at 1-800-370-6545 or go to comfortbydesign.net to schedule your appointment today. For over 55 years, DCA Title has been your local provider for all your abstracting, closing, and title insurance needs. If you're buying, selling, or refinancing your home, tell your realtor or lender that you want DCA Title. You have the right to choose. Just call 651-437-5600. That's 651-437-5600. Or online at dcatitle.com. We do more than just sell cars at Hastings Automotive. We also offer a professional detailing service. Right now, if you bring your car in, we'll do washback and windows for $39.95. But if you have some tough stains, don't worry about it. We have a 180-degree antibacterial steam cleaner that can get out the deepest stains. Come on in and get a free quote at Hastings Automotive. Locate Highway 61 South at Hastings. If you need your vehicle clean, give us a call, 437-4030. Tell them Bruce sent you. Carl Sonato and Truck, located in the Hastings Industrial Park, can take care of all your auto and truck needs. Whether it's a simple oil change or a major overhaul, the certified technicians fill your needs with fast, fair, friendly service. Remember Carlson Auto and Truck when it comes to your pickup, SUV, and four-wheel drive. No job too big, no job too small at Carlson Auto and Truck in the Hastings Industrial Park. Carlson Auto, your automotive winning team. The Y in Hastings is open. Capacity is limited to ensure safety guidelines and proper social distancing. To see current capacity levels, go to ymcanorth.org or call 651-480-8887. We want to thank everyone for sticking with us through these difficult times and are excited to see you all again. Support for this program comes from Flint Hills Resources. Buzzing with excitement over the recent discoveries of a rusty patch bumblebee at its Pine Bend Bluffs. Learn more about this rare bee species at pinebendrefinery.com. Eating out is more than just eating. It's a social experience that uses all your senses. Get the fullest experience at Fireside Social House in Hastings. Fireside Social House elicits a feeling of rustic comfort where you're always greeted by friends. The aroma will make your taste buds water and any menu item from Juicy Lucy to Shrimp Scampi will leave your palate blissfully overjoyed. Enjoy eating out at the fullest at the Fireside Social House in historic downtown Hastings. Tonight's Raiders football game is being made possible by R.L. Johnson's Jewelers in Midtown Hastings. Stop into R.L. Johnson's Jewelers for a wonderful selection of jewelry, watches, and custom jewelry design. Their staff is committed to take care of all your jewelry needs with absolute integrity and always competitive prices. In-store appraisal service with an independent graduate gemologist, fine jewelry, and watch repair is also available. R.L. Johnson's your trusted jeweler since 1985. I need 
Vision is geared towards helping customers fill an eyewear prescription from any eye doctor so you can continue to see your current doctor while getting your prescription eyeglasses from iNeek Vision. At iNeek Vision, we care about your vision and use the most advanced prescription lens technology to make your glasses not only look great, but to have you seeing great too. Stop into iNeek Vision where you are sure to have an eye Knowing that it's heard loud and clear, we understand knowledge can change your life and that energy will continue to power it. And because you are part of the Touchtone Energy Cooperative, we are always listening. Because you are more than just a customer. You are a member. And what's more powerful than that? Dakota Electric Association is your local Touchstone Energy Cooperative. Vermillion Wealth Management is a locally owned, full-service, registered investment advisory firm located at Vermillion State Bank. At Vermillion Wealth Management, we partner with our clients to help them achieve their financial goals with commonly include planning for retirement, generating consistent income during retirement, and passing on a legacy to their children and grandchildren. To learn more about our services, please call us for a free consultation at 651 480-4601 and ask for Jim Papel. Securities offered through Securities America Incorporated, member FINRA, SIPC, advisory services offered through Vermilion Wealth Management Incorporated, Vermilion State Bank, Vermilion Wealth Management, and Securities America are separate entities. Not FDIC insured, no bank guarantees, may lose value, not a deposit, not insured by any government agency. Crime rates have been rising. You have the right to feel safe without having to worry about being carjacked, mugged, or worse. To all law enforcement officers who protect that right all day and all night, every day and every night, I want to say thank you and pray that you get home to your family safely after your shift. I'm State Representative Tony Jurgens. I'm proud to stand with the men and women in law enforcement. It has been and continues to be an honor and a privilege to represent you in the legislature. Prepared and paid for by Jurgens Volunteer Committee. Your Hastings Perkins in the Midtown Shopping Center is currently temporarily closed due to a fire. This is only temporary. During this time, they are working diligently to reopen as soon as possible. The staff at Hastings Perkins wants to thank the community for their outpouring of support and can't wait to see you all again soon. Perkins Family Restaurant, Midtown Hastings. Tune into a Hastings Community TV serving the community for over 35 years for all things Hastings. Check out HastingsTV.org for schedules, videos, and more information like Hastings City Council and School Board meetings. Like them on Facebook to access news, fun videos, and more. Remember, Hastings Community TV is only on cable TV. So to get local, you need to get cable, and it's affordable. Call 866-540-6296 today. Are you putting your money into an IRA, pension, or 401k? Then I hope you're prepared to lose 30, 40, 50% or more of your retirement savings. Because it's not a question of if the market crashes again. It's a question of when. It's going to happen. Did you know there is a way you can protect and grow your wealth safely and predictably every single year? The people using this approach didn't lose a penny when the market crashed in 2000 or 2008, and they won't lose a penny in the next crash. In fact, their money will continue to grow safely year in and year out, even when stocks, real estate, and other investments tumble. A free report detailing this savings program is now available. This free report shows how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and wealth building power without risking your retirement in the Wall Street casino. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement. For your free report, call Greg Collins at 651-705-6998 or visit Collins Wealth Management at 1125 South Frontage Road, Suite 10 in Hastings. M&H is your full-service convenience gas station offering their famous roasted chicken, sandwiches, hot dogs, salads, refreshments, and plenty of gas pumps for easy in and easy out. M&H also offers a wide range of classic services including auto supplies, free ATM, and now hunting and fishing licenses. So stop by M&H on the corner of 15th and Vermilion Street today. Everybody knows Hastings Automotive sell cars, but did you know you can get your car professionally detailed at Hastings Automotive? Just just come on in and ask for Bruce, and we'll throw you a special on any car that you purchased here. But even if you didn't, so what? Bring it in, because we have a professional detail department that can steam your vehicle, take out dents, fill glass, do it all for you. One-stop shop at Hastings Automotive. So if you need your vehicle cleaned, whether it's new or used, bring it to Hastings Automotive, Highway 61 
out, give us a call. 651-437-4030. You can tell them Bruce sent you. For 15 years, North American Banking Company has been dedicated to the belief that banking is about people helping people. Locally owned and operated, we tailor our banking services specifically to meet your needs. We can do anything a big bank can do that includes mobile, online banking, and catering to personal or business interests. The only difference is that we know our customers by name, and when you call, we'll answer. North American Banking Company. Great service. Real time. By real people. Member FDIC. So, when was the last time you actually talked to your insurance agent? As an independent agency, Shomer Insurance makes sure you have the right insurance protection. After all, they represent over 20 highly rated companies. For Brian and Mary Shomer, it's all about relationships. Stop by or give them a call today at 651-319-0699 to find out why they say we are your true blue and gold insurance agency. You can find Find Schober Insurance at 3500 Cannon Street, Suite 200, here in Hastings. I believe that hope and optimism for our future continues to be strong and that each individual has the responsibility to give their very best in whatever endeavor they choose. It's a long climb from the depths of the COVID-19 pandemic to the stars, but we're witnessing the results every day from our parents, business owners, and community leaders. I'm State Representative Tony Jergens. I'm proud of how this community has come together. It has been and continues to be an honor and a privilege to represent you in the legislature. Prepared and paid for by Jergens Volunteer Committee. Coburn's offers fresh fruits, friendly service, convenient shopping, weekly specials, and more. When you're in a hurry, save time and money at Coburn's by shopping Coburn's online. Just go online, your pickup time, fill your cart, and check out. Coburn's handles the rest. It's that simple. Save your money and time at Coburn's, located at 225 33rd Street West in Hastings. You want a place that will treat your dental needs with professional skills as well as the latest equipment and techniques. But you also want a dentist that will make you feel at ease. You'll get both when you visit River Valley Dental. In practice since 1968, the people at River Valley Dental will work together to relieve your anxiety and help you get a nice, bright, and healthy smile. River Valley Dental, 1260 Highway 55 in Hastings. Call 651-437-1940 today and make your appointment. Valley View Farms is the area's best choice for locally sourced delicious milk. We invite you to taste the difference. Valley View Farms is proud of its fresh, pure taste from farm to bottle. Plainview Milk Products Cooperative is honored to continue this tradition. Look for our line of Valley View Farms dairy products at your Twin Cities retailer or locally at the Hastings Dairy Store on Vermilion Street in Hastings. And don't forget to grab yourself one of our famous shakes. We're losing too many of our young people. Suicides, drug overdoses, and fentanyl poisoning are far too common. Drug dealers are selling pills laced with lethal doses of fentanyl. One pill can kill. Depression and anxiety often go undiagnosed, but help is available. If you or someone you know is at risk, please seek help. We have to stop the tragic and unnecessary loss of life. I'm State Representative Tony Jurgens. It has been and continues to be an honor and a privilege to represent you in the legislature. Prepared and paid for by Jurgens Volunteer Committee. Warner Implement in Vermilion is your local New Holland dealer and service center for agricultural and light construction equipment. Check out our new or used inventory and the New Holland Superboom skid loaders. If you need parts or service, give us a call today at 651-437-4435 or visit our website at warnerimplement.com. Today's game is brought to you by Fisher Roofing. Fisher Roofing is a family-owned business that has been serving clients in Minnesota and Wisconsin for over 30 years. They're the flat roof pros. For details, call 800-A1-ROOFS. Duff's Meats 2 at 1223 Vermillion Street is ready to serve you with Hastings' largest selection of quality meat that is 99% antibiotic and GMO-free. You can count on a wide variety of tasty jerkies and beef sticks in addition to the expert meal planning assistance Assistance you can expect at Duff's Meats too. You can always find the special cut that is perfect for your table. Call them today at 651-437-9500 or just stop in. Duff's Meats too, always bringing quality to you. Just because you can't dine in at Carboni's and Hastings doesn't mean you can't indulge in a delicious meal. Enjoy pizza, burgers and fries, hot hoagies, wings, specialties, and don't forget to stock up on their pre-baked pizzas. Let Carboni's do dinner tonight. Takeout or delivery. Visit their website, carboniespizzeria.com, to view their full menu. 
They're located conveniently on North Frontage Road in Hastings or give them a call today at 651-438-8787 kids are getting back to school and who wants to drive their kids to school when they got their license not me come on down to Hastings Chrysler Center and get that ride for those kids to take to school today we got them priced as low as $500 all the way up to whatever you want to spend from there but anyways the deals are hot so come on in to Hastings Chrysler Center and check out the deals <laughs> for those kiddos down at 2980 Highway 61 South or call us at 651-437-5200 and when you get in there you need to tell them that Eric sent you Valley Chevrolet wants to thank everyone for their support during these uncertain times. They remind you that you can still bring your car into their service department and let the experts make sure your car is in safe working condition. And if it's time to get a new vehicle, the staff at Valley Chevrolet can help with that too. Valley Chevrolet, located on Highway 316. Discover the Valley difference at Valley Chevrolet on Highway 316. Sports on KDWA also being made possible by the following community-minded businesses. Downtown Tire and Auto. Marty Welch, your local farmer's insurance agency. Deals with wheels and Schomer Insurance. At Papa Murphy's in Hastings, it all starts fresh. They grate 40-pound blocks of 100% whole milk mozzarella, hand-slice whole veggies, and butcher quality meat daily. Slice up some of their delicious scratch-made pizzas, like the herb chicken Mediterranean, Angus steak and roasted garlic, Papa's all meat, and many more. Papa Murphy's is dedicated to bringing families together with only the freshest, highest quality pizza around. Stop into Papa Murphy's, located at the shopping center in Hastings, and taste love at 425. Quality One Woodwork in Hastings wishes our team the best of luck in the game. Quality play all the way. It's hunting season, so come on in and get that Ram pickup now with the Ram box or even the multi-function tailgate that splits wide open so you can get those decoys, those hunting things right out of that bed, no problem with ease. You can get a brand new Ram for only $2.99 a month. And we've got the largest selection down at Hastings Chrysler Center. So come on in and hunt for those deals and come on in to 2980 Highway 61 South or call us at 651-437-5200. And when you get in there, you need to tell them that Eric sent you. Bathfitter is North America's leading acrylic bathroom company. Bathfitter offers top quality customized bathroom renovation products and services with a lifetime warranty. Why spend tons of money, not to mention grueling hours on bathroom remodeling? Bathfitter offers a bathroom remodeling solution that lasts a lifetime. Done in just one day, call today at 651-925-8636 for a free consultation with an experienced staff member or go to their website, bathfitter.com. Your Hastings Perkins in the Midtown Shopping Center is currently temporarily closed due to a fire. This is only temporary. During this time, they are working diligently to reopen as soon as possible. The staff at Hastings Perkins wants to thank the community for their outpouring of support and can't wait to see you all again soon. Perkins Family Restaurant, Midtown Hastings. Midstate Plumbing, Heating, and Service in Hastings for all your services and needs. Whether it is residential or commercial, they are experienced in full service plumbing and heating, air conditioning, and they even have a great reputation for getting the job done on time. If you're looking to remodel or need a repair, upgrading your furnace, or need a new softener, they can get you covered and call Midstate Plumbing and Heating at 651-438-1195 for all your plumbing and heating needs. Thank you. For pizza that doesn't disappoint, choose Domino's of Hastings. 
When you order Domino's, you're not ordering the same old ordinary pizza. You're ordering a pizza with an oven-baked crust, marinara sauce handcrafted from only the best tomatoes, and a yummy collection of toppings. Be sure to check them out online for their ever-changing lunch and dinner specials. Or give Domino's a call at 651-437-3930. Stop in today at Domino's, located at 103 West 23rd Street in Hastings. Green Mills Pizza Takeout and Delivery Special is a large... Old World Style or Pescara Crust and an order of wings for $19.99. You call the shots on the toppings and we'll do the rest. This takeout and delivery special is sure to please. And for a limited time, you can add a garlic cheese bread for only $5 more. Your Hastings Green Mill is located in Schoolhouse Square on Vermilion Street. Green Mill is the place to be for happy hour. Join us twice a day for excellent happy hour prices and good times. The EPA has banned the use of R22 Freon in new AC units in 2010. As a result, if you have an AC unit 2010 or before, you'll be faced with hard-to-find Freon and crazy high prices. At Comfort by Design, we're here to help. We are not only starting AC maintenance services early this year, but we also lowered our prices. We want to make sure you are taken care of before temperatures and prices rise. So give us a call at 1-800-370-6545 or go to comfortbydesign.net to schedule your appointment today. For over 55 years, DCA Title has been your local provider for all your abstracting, closing, and title insurance needs. If you're buying, selling, or refinancing your home, tell your realtor or lender that you want DCA Title. You have the right to choose. Just call 651-437-5600. That's 651-437-5600. Or online at dcatitle.com. We do more than just sell cars at Hastings Automotive. We also offer a professional detailing service. Right now, if you bring your car in, we'll do a wash back and windows for $39.95. But if you have some tough stains, don't worry about it. We have a 180 degree antibacterial steam cleaner that can get out the deepest stains. Come on in and get a free quote at Hastings Automotive, located Highway 61 South at Hastings. Or if you need your vehicle clean, give us a call, 437-4030, and you can tell them Bruce sent you. Carl Sonato and Truck, located in the Hastings Industrial Park, can take care of all your auto and truck needs. Whether it's a simple oil change or a major overhaul, the certified technicians fill your needs with fast, fair, friendly service. Remember Carlson Auto and Truck when it comes to your pickup, SUV, and four-wheel drive. No job too big, no job too small at Carlson Auto and Truck in the Hastings Industrial Park. Carlson Auto, your automotive winning team. The Y in Hastings is open. Capacity is limited to ensure safety guidelines and proper social distancing. To see current capacity levels, go to ymcanorth.org or call 651-480-8887. We want to thank everyone for sticking with us through these difficult times and are excited to see you all again. Support for this program comes from Flint Hills Resources, buzzing with excitement over the recent discoveries of a rusty patch bumblebee at its Pine Bend Bluffs. Learn more about this rare bee species at pinebendrefinery.com. Eating out is more than just eating. It's a social experience that uses all your senses. Get the fullest experience at Fireside Social House in Hastings. Fireside Social House elicits a feeling of rustic comfort where you're always greeted by friends. The aroma will make your taste buds water and any menu item from Juicy Lucy to Shrimp Scampi will leave your palate blissfully overjoyed. Enjoy eating out at the fullest at the Fireside Social House in historic downtown Hastings. Tonight's Raiders football game is being made possible by... Back on Kenny W.A., also on our video feed, Nick Tuckner here, Jerry Rupp, Mr. Hunter Pinky on our video feed. 45-2. to two. Glad you're with us. The Jerry and Tuck Show. It's not Friday, but that's okay. We're going to have some fun. It's the smell of a bonfire. Now, are you going somewhere to which a bonfire will be provided tonight, Mr. Rupp? Well, unfortunately, Brainerd's getting lots of rain. Oh, you, uh, I suppose. Then might as well stay home. Well, but I have to go up and turn the water off. <laughs> so that's a fun trip. You're going to go up, turn the water off, uh, well, and come back home or what? Much, but you know what? I'll just take my time, stop along yep. the way, have something to eat, and just, you know, make the best of it. Sounds like fun, my man. 
Here we go. Kickoff coming up right to left. And that'll be taken short, 15-yard line. Tommy Kennedy, 30, 35, runs a man over. Keeps going, 40, 35, spins away midfield. Keeps going, 45, on the Sibley side. And how many returns has that young man had? So many big plays has that young man had. Another great return puts us in Sibley territory to open the second half, Jerry and well, fans. that was kind of fun. A little bit, uh, I mean, one could say a little scary because he's spinning around and the ball is out there untucked, but uh, you know he had a good enough control of it to get to the Two Rivers 46-yard line. So that's a great way to start for the Raiders, give them a, a big boost to uh, get in there on that offensive side and you know maybe move that ball down for another score. Untucked, I think that's what we call uh, once Tuck signs off uh, after football yeah. on Friday or Saturday for the rest of the weekend. That'll happen soon. Hopefully the Raider win. Now here is Axel Arnold off the snap, go right up ahead on a quarterback keeper beautiful design goes right up the middle he'll gain nearly 10 and that's exactly what they wanted so nick i am literally i was at the line of scrimmage i'm looking down the line as a two <laughs> rivers defensive tackle his full helmet was on the ball yep. and the side judge just they ignore it yeah i guess at this point it's like well, whatever but it's like uh, uh excuse me that'd be a neutral zone infraction oh well Details. Is that a rule? Do you know? <laughs> I don't. I, is it a rule? I don't know. It depends on if you're in the NFL because yeah. I, from yeah, they the, the way either. they've been yeah. calling anything lately, it's been ridiculous. True. That's a whole nother show. And now second down and one. Give is to Fryerboot. Dances around one guy, falls ahead into a pile of linebackers for a first down gain of five, maybe six. We'll take that. Move the chains and the clock, Jerry Rupp, and that is going to be the key to success here in the second half. That's right. Just keep the ball on the ground if you can. You've got a you know well stocked lead here. Just keep moving the chains. That's what you want to do. Ball control, move the chains, chunk up that clock, get to the fourth quarter, and let it rip. Also a social event here, as many fans yeah. would know. <laughs> so yeah, we've got the ninth grade class over here for Two Rivers yeah. getting all excited. They're having a good time. The, yeah, it's all right. That's what it's all about. Especially the gals. They're, 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 they're planning their fun for yeah. later tonight. Of course, the weekend fun, always fun after football. Here's a handoff as to check on the jet off left side. 20, 15, 10, he's going for five, touchdown. Johnny Bezdechek, a 31-yard touchdown run, and the Raiders hit 30 for the first time this year. That was just a nice play. It just you know, Raiders were putting hat on hat, getting some guys you know covering up the defense, and and uh, he just found a way to get in there. So it was a nice job, just juking and driving and getting all the way down the end zone. Johnny Bez in to make it 41 nothing. He's had himself a game today too, on both sides. Yes, sir. Again. And my goodness, it's 41-2. to two. Philly an extra point try. Senior kicker, right-footed booter. Snap good, spot good. Kicks up. Sure, he's good again. That's the best Re one he's had all game. Reese Fillion has scored about a touchdown's worth of extra points here tonight. That was a nice kick right there. I mean, he literally split the uprights. That'll make it 42 to two, Jerry. Well, we got our, our 35 point advantage. Now we just gotta run this clock down and get to the fourth quarter so we can, you know, stop the bleeding. We've been on, a, we, we've been on the other side of this. Yes. I mean, you and I both for, you know, years on end. And we always say, whether it was a Creighton or a St. Thomas or a Moundsview or a White Bear Lake, well, you, you want to win the game, right? So you can't take anything away from them. And the one thing you have to do if you don't want this to happen is to stop them. Yeah. Right? I, I mean, and, and we've been on that side. And, and that's that's something, too, that I know Coach Orth is saying, too, to his guys is that Hastings isn't going to go away, whether it's their ones, their twos, or the threes out there. They're going to keep coming at us. And, and they got to start making stops, too. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, you just you have to stop the other team. And, yep. and you know, the Raiders now. Uh, history right now. What we got there? Sammy Williams is kicking off for Hastings. Oh, the the, the, the girl? She becomes the awesome. first girl her. to kick off, and the Raider fans acknowledge her being out there. This is so cool. Sammy Williams left her, and oh, the girl! That's a, that's a good kickoff! Take it at the 12-yard line near side, and the Raiders will try to wrap him up at the 35. 
And on a play around the I, 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 You gotta love that. That blonde ponytail sticking out the back of that helmet. That is awesome. She had a great kick. She put it out there over the, the up backs and kind of put it right down in the middle on the ground. That was a beautiful kick by her. Kurt Strain first off the field to give her a low five coming through Good there. for her. Odman coming off the field. Oh my goodness. That was so cool to see a bunch of the boys come out and say, hey young lady, add a girl. And the roar from the Rainer fans was even better. Sammy Williams makes history the first girl to kick off in Hastings Raider football history. Here is the handoff that will be taken up the middle, turning ahead. Raiders got a bunch of well, twos out there too now. Williams. Yep. So that, and that's the one thing you, you kind of want to be. I mean, obviously we've got a, a huge cushion here, but you know you, you just gotta make sure that the twos do their job. You know, and, and that guys, you can't you know slack off because you had such a huge lead. I know they want to play their hearts out. And this is a good uh, opportunity for them to get in and get some game experience, but they have to take advantage of it and, and perform. Yeah, not many, if any, starters even out there anymore nope. for Hastings. Under center, the handoff given up the middle, and not for much as the Raiders do get a gang tackle after a gain of four and a half. Coffee back out at quarterback. Tag was the original, or excuse me, Hag was the original... Uh, uh, defender for Raiders, wrap it up the, the running back. Hag, big fella, and Sam Rumpsell, 5'9", 350 of him up there. That is a what we call run stopper that in the middle. That is a nose tackle yep. right there, boy. That young man. He, you're not going to run into the middle on him. Nope. Raiders got a lot of beef up front here, and the handoff will go off left side into space with speed and a nice tackle as Ozzie Robinson will get a first down. Aaron Vanderhoff was there to make the tackle. Kind of an open space, and that's the thing. When you have a bigger line, those guys aren't going to be able to move with the play as much, and you're going to have to make sure the guys from the corners come up and make their play. Exactly, and Raiders had it well defended to the right side of the field. Unfortunately, two rivers went to the left side, so they had a lot of open running space there. It'll be interesting to see what the Raiders come out with offensively in the next drive. Coffee back to pass, throwing up a bomb, and he's got a man, and it's going to be open. Catch down the run. Carl Strohoffer. Strohoffer made a great adjustment on the ball. He was looking toward the inside on that pass, and the ball was thrown to the outside towards the stripe. And he just turned his head around and made that catch before he stepped out of bounds. So nice job by him to make that catch, to kind of twist it around there, and, and uh, you know makes it get down to the two yard line for uh, Two Rivers. Warriors have their first chance to score a ball at the two. Let's see if the Raiders can force a fumble or something here. Coffee man in motion, hands off up the middle. It's going to be fumbled into the end zone. But I think he did right to his score. Yes. He, he fumbled and he fell on his own fumble. So he was hit in the air, fumbled it, and it landed, and he landed right on top of the ball that was landing. So Mason Moynihan, the one yard touchdown, and we also have a Warrior down. 52 for the Warriors is a little shaken up. You know, I don't want to, you know, take anything off on the twos here, but that was a, a one minute, 30 some odd second drive here. We still got a lot of time left in the second half, Jerry. That's, you know, that's a little bit of what I'm worried about. You know, you, you, you got to take care of the game here. I mean, you know, yes, you want to give vital experience, but uh, you got you got to do what you, you know, you need to do. And uh, again, now that pass was a nice pass downfield. Clay Karras got burned, unfortunately. He he was in good position, but the ball was thrown to the outside. He had no chance of getting to it. Great, great recovery by their receiver. Um, so now the Raiders are getting a little instruction over there, saying, "Hey, this is what we did. This is what we need, need to do. Now, need to tighten it up, fellas." Meanwhile, we're still getting attended to by uh, the player from Two Rivers. I can't see what's in the. Oh, it, cramp. Cramp. Oh yeah, he was. He had bad cramp. <laughs> <What's>, <laughs> he was writhing in pain too. And that after after you could kind of see him sit up and, and he, he almost a smile through his mask. I think that he knew that that was. Crampage. I mean, it's still warm and humid, Chair. I mean, this is I mean, for for yeah. October, whatever we're at, tenth or ninth. You still have to hydrate when you're playing yeah. a game. You still have to hydrate, even when you don't think you're thirsty, or else you will cramp up, and that's not a fun position to be in. AJ Boykin will kick. High snap, threw off his mojo, but still got it through there. 
42 to 9. All right, so the Raiders most likely will bring out their twos on offense here. We'll see what they do after the kickoff return. Do you think we'll see Sammy again if we touch, score another touchdown? I think that would be so much fun. I think so too. Give Reese the break. You know, he's done his job today. Give him the day off, rest of the day off, and put Sammy out there. Let her boot it away again. I'd love to see her get yes. a point. I mean, that would really be history then too. Oh, that, yeah, to get an extra point. That'd, that'd be, be so cool. awesome. I mean, yes. That would make our, our day. And our well, you know, and I've watched her throughout the game so far this year down on the sideline and. You know, she, she's in there cheering everybody on and, you know, patting on the rear end like everybody else does and really being a full supporter of her teammates. You know, she's just the ultimate team player, and it's just kind of cool to see that and now to see her get in and get her chance. I mean, <laughs> as a player, I remember back those days, you just wanted a, your chance just to get on the field. She got her chance, and that's so cool. Just awesome. I mean, there's no other way to paint it up. And it's a, it, 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 you try not to, to be emotional about it, but you know how much it means to that young lady. And she's only a junior, you know. I mean, keep getting better at the craft, and you never know what's going to happen next year. Yep, yep. Proud of 27. We'll see her again, I think, today. Like Cherry said, let's go have some fun with these twos on offense, too, because I think that's who's coming out. Try an onside kick. Kick it right. That's a good onside kick. Someone get on it. And they do. Raiders will have the ball at the 35. I think someone just knocked the wind out of themselves jumping wow. on that football. Johnny Charlton, yeah. he just got his stomach full of football and into the rib cage. Well, that, you know, that, that, that and also, and I think he took a, a shin pad or a, you know, a knee pad to the helmet. Oh. I think he kind of took a, on a noggin there. So I think oh, that's maybe no. what he was feeling more. Yeah. I mean, he's up and moving around. Yeah. He's just fine. But I think he took a little noggin whap there. Yeah, but sometimes, Jerry, you know, I mean, sometimes the, the – the, the most minor of, of, of melon knocks causes some of the worst concussions. Well, Look at Justin Morton. Yeah. Know, he would, oh, yeah, seriously. Pretty much retire because yeah, of that. Exactly. That's right. Corey Koski. I mean, that was baseball stuff. Yep. You know, he's worrying about blows to the head. I think Milner's at quarterback. It is. And he'll hand it off to Dowdy, and he'll churn ahead for two, maybe. Two. Yeah, that's about two. Yep. <laughs> that was dangerous to a uh, face mask there. They're... they're uh, Two Rivers defender had him right around uh, kind of the uh, the opening there between the the guard and the top of the helmet, but gotta get some positive yards, gotta get the clock running. Some first downs would be nice here. I mean, there's kind of a checklist we, here for the twos well, right now. Yeah, and you can't go into a three and out situation continually. We need to make move, need to move the ball. Luke Charlton's gonna get a chance in the slot at receiver as well. Cooper's still out there. Yeah. Odman in the game. would love to get him into the end zone after the weird stuff that happened against St. Thomas. Downey, great spin move, but he spun right into one of the linebackers, broke away, got another half a yard. It'll be third and about five and a half, maybe six here for Hastings as they battle with the twos in and a 42 to nine Hastings lead third quarter, 820 to go. Yeah, this is a situation, a third and five, long five. You, you kind of want to avoid those situations because, uh, you know, we're going to have to have a good play here to keep the sticks moving, getting down the field, and keep that clock ticking away. After the game, we will have a short recap with Mr. Dick Craig, and then we'll have portions of that in our sports recaps for the weekend review, the rest of our weekend review, and through Monday morning, and then we'll talk with Coach Strain and Coach Jordan Hansen of the Cardinals. Here's a pass that's Oh, my. Oh, a catch reaching behind his body to make the catch. And that was Austin LaFleur, and I think he might have just brought himself some more offensive uh, time out there, if you know what I mean, Jay. That was pretty. That's better than doing a long snap, and boy, you can touch the ball. That's fun. And it was, a, yeah, he was right. It was a throw behind him, but he just spun his body around, got the mid out there, and brought it in for the first down. That was huge for the Raiders. They needed to move that ball and get it onto the Two Rivers side of the field. Okay, and I want to tell you something, fans. LaFleur does not wear gloves. There was no, you know, stickiness. No. If you, that was all on his hands. Here's a jet sweep that's going to be taken by Charlton out right side. Uh, fans asking for a hold, not going to get it. And if Charlton's in a game, maybe six. Yeah, he just stuck with it and just kept going. Get outside there and get around the corner. There was a key block laid by the Raiders that uh, sprung him, and that's what they were trying to ask for a hold. But you know, he was a good job. Everybody just timed people up, but he just kept the faith, kept going, kept going, and he found that little outside seam there and, and got down the sideline for a nice seven-yard gain. Give him seven. I like it. Right hash Raiders, maybe feeling a little flow now with the twos maybe, out there. Yeah. Milner out of the gun, two receivers left, one to the right, right hash Raiders out there. 
with the twos. Look like maybe they jumped early. Downey will take it up the middle. Game maybe a half a yard. It looked like maybe simply just got the snap count perfectly. Yeah, and and our the difference we're seeing now between the twos and the ones with the offensive line is that the twos just aren't getting the fire off the ball like the ones did. They're not penetrating deeper into the uh, defensive line of, of two rivers. They're actually getting the penetration themselves. And when your running back has to start juking and driving him, he's two yards behind the line of scrimmage. That doesn't bode well for a, for a positive yardage gain. Clock running, 6.45 to go. Third quarter, Raiders leading it 42 to 9. All Raiders early, and it's carried on. Now the two's in the game. Charlton thought about the Jet instead, handoff Downey. Turns ahead. He's not going to get the first down. We're probably going to go for it here, though. This is kind of no man's land. You don't need to punt it away. And might no. as well use these plays for these guys in twos anyway. No, they're, they're, no, they're going to punt. punt. They're going to punt. Yeah. I mean, you need to work your punt team, too. This you is know, that, Charlton's first punt today. Yeah, that's the thing. That's why I'm saying you want to punt yeah. because you also have to work that punt team. Um, they need to get some action and game experience. I mean, you can do it all you want in practice, but it's nothing like a actual game experience or game time play. So it's good to get the punt team in there, boot it away, hopefully pin them deep, and then let your defense have a second chance. So they they uh, came up a little short on that first try. Now we'll give them a second try, the twos. Reese Fillion's going to actually punt this thing. All right. They'll go left to right. Good snap. Reese, nice time, good high kick. Fair catch signaled, hit him in the head! Hit him with the helmet! Raiders recovered, did they? Yes, yes, they did! Hit him right on the helmet. Recovered by Aaron Vandehoff. Vandehoff with the recovery, and the Raiders take it back on a muffed punt in the weirdest way possible. Hit him right on the top of the helmet and went back to the pack of Raiders. Man, I tell you what, when things go bad, they go bad. I mean, they're... <laughs> Two Rivers blocking back was back to trying to, to push Charlton out of the way there, and it just bumped him right on top of the head. I mean, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And then luckily no. for the Raiders, we were Johnny on the spot and made that recovery. So now Raiders are set up shop at the 17-yard line of Two Rivers, so they have a, a second chance here of moving that ball and perhaps getting in the end zone again. Sometimes you're the dog and sometimes you're the fire hydrant. Oh, I'm you. Raiders have been dog-eat-dog -dog all night tonight, haven't they? They have. Oof. Even a break like that. Now a chance to score here. 5.25 to go. Now the ball in the red zone. And the handoff Downey tiptoes into the line. you got to have a little more yeah. you know, a little more something going into the line. There was a lot of dancing before he even found a hole. Well, he just got power in there. Yeah, and the thing, too, is that uh, right now the, the Raiders' offensive line just isn't getting the job done. They, they are allowing too all much penetration. Yeah, they're all twos. Yep. I'll give you that. Um, and they're learning. You know, they're getting some game experience here, but they, they obviously uh, need to keep working on you know making contact with the defensive player and sticking with their blocks. Right now, the uh, D line for Two Rivers is just getting in unabated, and they're actually getting right to the you know the running back before he even had a chance to do anything. Peterson, Hartman, Sorensen, some of the guys out there on the line now too for Hastings. Man in motion across the line. Charlton back in the game. That's Johnny. Handoff goes to Doughty, and he won't get much, but he will get positive yards, third down. As we're in field goal territory, you, you know, uh, I, I don't know if you force Sammy to go out there in this particular situation from this depth anyway for your first ever varsity try. Yeah, I don't think that that probably Maybe would race. be a good idea because you're looking at uh, about a 30... They're about a 30-yard yeah. field goal into the wind. Right. That might be a tough uh, tough call there. Really, for either kicker. Yeah, I think so. Four minutes, clock running. Third quarter. Out of the shotgun. Milner will throw. He's got a man intercepted, though. He was looking for Charlton as a tight end. Right at the goal line, and he's picked off. He had him, but Corey Delk just stepped in, inside there, a senior uh, defensive back for two rivers. He just stepped up there, and uh, he's not a short guy either. He got up there, and he's a six foot. He made the high reach, and well, the Raiders turned the ball, turned the ball over, but the good news is that uh, two rivers has 90 yards to go to hit pay dirt. Long ways to go. Crept along, really. Surprised considering the score, but. Well, big plays, you know, big score, big plays, uh, just kind of how it goes. 
Warriors have the football. Coffee will hand off up the middle. He's not going anywhere. That was a better job by the Raiders of getting in there and, and making some, you know, penetration in there. Number 73, uh, was it uh, Raymond Hartman got in there on that one. Golden Men, six foot, 200 pound running back, running hard, but Hartman getting that nose in there. And again, some of those big fellas, six foot, 246. Junior on the line. It's like Dylan Bartz over there on the other side, yes. uh, on the other side of the line that's that's uh, getting some good playing time. Evan Zwoboda in also in the secondary at safety. And here comes a, a blindside block. Meyer again looking for the sack instead. He gets the throw off, and the catch is made by Strohoffers. Really had a great game today for Henry Sibley slash Two Rivers. Yeah, he re really has. And, and Will Meyer was just a step behind getting a, another sack from the blind side. He was coming as hard as he could, but and they they got the ball off just in time. And Strohoffer made a nice catch there to move the sticks for Two Rivers. Myers is really playing well as an edge rusher, kind of a stand-up outside linebacker type that can yeah. just edge rush like nobody can and, and he came in and hit a blindside shot earlier almost had another one man in motion across the line fake the pass instead throw the jet out there right side Moynihan running out of room and he's going to end up going out of bounds near the line of scrimmage eventually he might have ended up gaining a half of a yard Gino Long good in pursuit there as well 65 <laughs> across the, the field Dylan Bartz we talked about him as well a yeah, little Keystone cops going out there Will Meyer and uh, Aaron Vanderhoff were in hot pursuit, and they tripped over each other, and yeah. both of them went down in the, in the cloud of, what are those things called, those little pellets? Oh, oh yeah, well, it's ground up tires and shoes oh, is sure. what it is. There you yep. go. You can't call it a cloud of dust, it was just a cloud of pellets. Cloud of pellets, rubber pellets. I mean, even even days that I do games here, and I'm not even on the field, I somehow end up with like 50 of them in my shoes <laughs> when I get home. Here's a throw. Oh, here's a football, and the radar slipped down. Will they get it? I think they just did. In the secondary, it looks like Swoboda ends up getting the fumble recovery. No, it's going to be Downey. No, that's Sorensen. Aiden Sorensen. Aiden Sorensen, good for him. Gets in there to get the fumble recovery. Raiders will get the football back again as turnovers are starting to play a little a portion of this game. So in the first half, Aiden Sorensen was pressed into service to come over from the far side gunner position on kickoff. He had to come over and kneel down and do the old Lucy thing, you know, hold the football down because it was kept blowing off the tee. Now he finally gets rewarded with, with a, uh, a fumble recovery. Let's get it back. And I realize you're not starting on the red zone out of the turnover, but you have the football at the Two Rivers 43. First and 10 Hastings. Milner out of the gun. Two receivers left. One short side right. That's Rico Cooper. And a little pitch out right. Oh my, that's not going anywhere. Downey trying to escape. He'll lose four. That little pitch not going to go anywhere here, especially yeah, well, with not as much protection. Here un unfortunately, well. Lucas Sorensen got beat. He was trying to lay a block out there, and he got beat, and his man was right in the way, and there's just no way that play was going to go anywhere. And, the, and the, you know, the, the receivers, they got to realize, too, that they got a block on the edge. I mean, that, that's the one thing our starting, uh, you know, backs, uh, I should say, receivers have done so well this year. Yeah. You know, they've been watching on the sidelines. They know, and it, we got to see them make those blocks, too. Exactly. Craig Peterson checks in as a slot receiver left. As the Raiders out of the shotgun, second down at 14. Handoff up the middle will be Dowdy. Spins away, gets back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll bring up third and 10 as the clock rolls, and that's kind of what the Raiders want here. Leading 42 to 9, and I know Coach Strain and Coach Orth are very good friends, and I know more than anything, Coach Strain's not going to try to shove it in the face of, of a team like Sibley. That's just not the way that Coach... Either one of those two work. No, and matter. we've been on, like you said, we've been on the other side of this coin a few times, yeah. and you know what it feels like when you're getting just shoved down your throat, and, and uh, you know, the Raiders have a little more class than that. They're giving your guys some work and making it a nice little scrimmage football game. Two receivers left, one right, short side, Rico. Charlton is a tight end off the line, right. Creed Peterson in faking the jet, back to pass. Danny Milner, good ball, but a little bit overthrown. Gavin Odman, uh, he came in kind of a, a slant, deep slant and yeah. just overthrew him. Well, and the thing, too, is you're throwing into triple coverage. They had it well bracketed up on top, in front, and to the side. There was nowhere for the ball to really get in there. Unless you throw a laser, which it wasn't, um, there's just no way that ball is going to get there. So the Raiders will come out with their uh, punt team. 42-9 Raiders. 
third quarter, 59 seconds to play. Strohoffer back again. He's been their guy. Really all night. Day. I don't want to say night yet. It's not night yet, Nicholas. No, Come you're, on. You're, I don't want to wish away my Saturday. No, no. Like I said, I, I got to start thinking about family meal. Usually yeah. Saturday nights we like to cook something, Jer. So yeah. I got to I got to find the plan here. 59 seconds. Good snap. Reese. Nice kick here again. In the again. And the ball is loose. Stroke off it. And he finds it. He did it. The 19. Raiders almost got another muff. Yep, kind of, he tried to come in on the run and, and catch it. It was just down around his knees, and he wasn't able to bring it in cleanly. But uh, fortunately for him, the ball didn't bounce away from him, and he was able to fall on it. So Two Rivers sets up shop at their own 20-yard line, it looks like. Yep. Got a little powwow here with the officials. I think they're changing balls. Yep, yep, There we go, yep. okay. There we go. In comes one from the Sibley sideline. Raiders' ball goes back out. Hey, another another casual observation. We've got a female back judge here on the defensive side. Good for her. I love to see women out there doing the officiating too. Absolutely, and we're getting more and more of them. I know our opening game we did too, and that was kind of fun to have a chat with her before the game and the rain down by the sideline. But it was a kind of a cool thing, and well, especially in football because there's a oh, it's so macho men, blah right. blah blah. You sure. know what? To get female officials out here and get them involved, it's just so exciting to see that and just. Change the dynamic of the game. You know, get get more people involved that really can do the job. You know, you look at gals like Sammy Williams, like yep. uh, Skyler Little Soldier. Yeah. I mean, some of these kids that that aren't afraid to break barriers, and I absolutely love it. It's great fodder on the radio too. Is a throw out to the right side. Oh, running a man over. Man, what a catch and what a truck. Who is that far side, Jer? Can see the number. It's eleven. Uh, well. Golden again. 50, 55 for uh, Henry Sibley was the guy carrying the ball, I believe. No, it was at Golden oh, 11, gold. yeah. Okay, gold again, gold. just power. Yeah, uh, but I think Aiden there's a got a there? taste of that. He it took one right in the chops. Rough right flat footed. Oh, boy. I, 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 I don't th I think that was football, but. Yeah, all right, they're, they're going to go ahead and say roughing the passer, but I. I'm sorry, fans. That that was that was as much football as anything, and they're going to go ahead and say that that was a 15-yard penalty. Wow. Yeah, my goodness, that's just walking down the field. I, I, I can't agree with it. Even in a 42-9 game, I, I mean, I I get uh, it, but, but that's what you sometimes see. If, you know, favorable calls to the team that's uh, behind. <laughs> Questionable favorable calls. This will make it first down, and this will also push Sibley over midfield. And they fumble the football. Coffey lost it at midfield. The freshman crews, that's what you're hearing over here, folks, screaming at the end of the third quarter. 42-9 to nine is your score, and we will take a break here and come back with more fun from Two Rivers High School where the Hastings Raiders are moving 42 to nine here in the KWA. I need vision is geared towards helping customers fill an eye your prescription from any eye doctor so you can continue to see your current doctor while getting your prescription eyeglasses from Unique Vision. At Unique Vision, we care about your vision and use the most advanced prescription lens technology to make your glasses not only look great, but to have you see great too. Stop into Unique Vision for you are sure to have an unique experience. What is it that makes you powerful? It's not only having a voice, but knowing that it's heard loud and clear. We understand knowledge can change your life and that energy will continue to power it. And because you are part of the Touch Tone Energy Cooperative, we are always listening. Because you are more than just a customer. You are a member. What's more powerful than that? Dakota Electric Association is your local Touchstone Energy Cooperative. Be back with everybody on video here in just a moment. Let's see a first down run, though. Monahan. We're going to rejoin our radio listeners. First down. Fourth quarter we're on KDWA on our video and audio. And I was just talking to just our video folks uh, by themselves there for a moment. First down carry for Moynihan. And we'll 
First down there for Henry Sibley slash Two Rivers. I've called them that all game. It's going to take me all score here to start calling them Two Rivers again as a handoff to Moynihan again as he bowls his way up. He might get another first down there, Jerry. He's having some fun out there yeah, for, for Two Rivers. Yes, yeah, two great runs in a row for Moynihan. There. He's, he's uh, definitely not giving up. He wants to play some football. 42-9, fourth corner. We'll say the game as the Raiders should go to four and two, which that's pretty fun considering how we felt leaving St. Thomas a couple weeks ago. That's right. Four and two is pretty fun right now. Got to finish. Let's have some fun, guys. Handoff goes back up the middle, and Goldeman carries a couple for another nice little run here on first down. Tell you what, he can really put the, the hammer on some people. He's been doing some good sticking of his own. Got to tackle him around the legs, not down, up on the shoulder pads, or he'll make you pay for it. They got some good players. I mean, it's just just putting it all together, I think, for Coach Orth's team. That, that's going to be the most important. A quick update, too. Simley leading Tartan 14-7. They're also playing today. I did not know they were playing today, actually. So that's an update from Metro East Affair. Here's a pass left. Coffee ew, almost intercepted there. Hastings had willing hands right there in the middle. Trying to pick up the numbers. Is that 35 or 35? I thought 35. He's not on the roster. Well, who is that? Let's take another gander. Maybe it is 25. No, 15. Yeah, it is 25. Okay, Hague. Tyler Hag yeah. there to make a play. Sibley's fans are just saying, hey, let's just get a first down here. They're going to run out right side. I don't know if they're going to get it here. It's, uh, yep, second effort, I think he got it. Yep. Just past the first down marker. Oh, I don't want to put, I put final on there. I don't want to do that. In the third quarter is what it was. Just kidding. Yep. Oopsies. I'm trying to do I'm trying to do 17 things at one time today. Jerry's been laughing at me I think all day long trying to do you, if uh, you, social media video. Mm -hmm. I mean, what am I what am I doing at one time? If Jerry? you people only knew what Nick has gone through today to put this together for y'all, you should really <laughs> be enjoying this broadcast. I hope so. If it wasn't for Hunter, I don't think I would get it on the air either because he's been uh, awesome. Is this handoff Golden Men? He'll get about a yarn. I, I don't think people sometimes understand what goes into putting together the radio and the TV and everything and just the behind the scenes that you guys put into this thing. It's just. I mean, it's it's top notch. I mean, everybody, you should really appreciate what you're hearing, what you're seeing. It's top notch what these guys do. I appreciate that, buddy. And that's not just you being a raider. <laughs> no, I see what no. what it takes to get into it. It's it's not easy, fans. It is not easy at all. And today is going to be one of those days, Whoopsie. right? Uh, that's going to be two guys moving at one time. That's a uh, false start, sir. Uh, yeah, they're going to try calling a timeout. How is that not? How is that not a flag right away? You saw the same thing I did. Yeah, that's a I don't flag immediately. know how that Apparently, works. Apparently, we'll give you a pass on that. Huh. Um, we're going to give him a timeout. Jerry and I are going to keep it right here. I'm going to try to correct our social media post that I put final score on, and that's not the case because it was only the end of three. <laughs> it might be, uh, but you never, you never know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, jeez. It's just, it's, like I said, fans, I am sitting here with my phone in front of my face, a mic in front of me, a headset on, trying to tweet as I watch the field and finding the picture to put on the tweet that I just had. Now I have it up there. Got a little por portable battery pack thing going here. You got about 10 bags worth of stuff he's carrying. <sighs> Oh, my goodness. Man, I'm telling you what, we need old number seven out here, the pack mule, to take you all the stuff away. <laughs> I, I, that's the one thing I think Dan and I are going to have a discussion about at the end of the football season is a wagon type of Seriously? Thing. You know, one of those fold-up wagon yes. wheels? That, that is definitely something that we have to get involved in, and hopefully that will be soon. Because, yeah, that's that's it's just so tough to oh. do that. Here's a handoff back up the right side. It's going to get a couple yards, right? Maybe five. Meyer scoops him up and throws him down. Cole Vinge just missed. He came in on the play, and he was just about a foot too much to the left. He almost made a tackle for loss, but uh, Two Rivers found a way to, to make a gain out of that. All right, third down. Raiders looking for a big stop with the twos here to have a little fun, and I think that would help them celebrate their Saturday, yeah. too, to get yep. a stop and force a fourth down play. Under center, Coffee, Two wings, double wing. Hand off left side. Nice little move there, cutting off left side. That should be a touchdown. It will be.
and and fitting for him. You know, he's he's carried that ball quite a bit. He's done some good job for for Two Rivers, and he just kind of fallen his way off the off the end there, and kind of picked his way through, and then went for that pylon, and just outran the Raiders for that that touchdown, his second of the game. 22-15. And now the officials are talking, and this might not be a touchdown, Jerry. Yeah. I didn't see laundry. No, I didn't. See? No, there's no laundry on the field. I'm trying to. I'm trying to see what they're deciding, what they're going to do here. Some kind of new rule that we don't know about. Maybe. No, well, official will come over now and talk to Coach Orth. Well, I'll probably penalize on the kick. We'll penalize on what's right there. Yeah, on, on the kickoff, the ensuing kickoff. They could go for two if they oh, didn't take it. Oh, sure, sure. If it's one yard. Yeah, yeah. Now going for two. Yeah. I see two yeah, fingers up, sense. and it's not a hook 'em horns. Must mean two. I couldn't hear that. Oh, they wanted to add Mason. So they must have a buddy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh man, I remember those days. And as a player, you turn around going, "Shh, quiet. That doesn't help me. Quiet." Your buddy's there. I got him back though in a hockey game though when they're on the bench. Right. Uh, you're always a chance to razz back. That's the right. Center is coffee. He'll hand off and up the middle. Golden middle. Take it in for two. Twenty-two sixteen. Well, that's good for Two Rivers. A little positivity he turned towards the end of the game, you know. Just and they, and they have not given up. They've been trying the entire time, and it's good that they're rewarded with a touchdown here. Two point conversion was successful for them. So, you know, again, everything you you do in in practice, you want to try it in a game situation, and hopefully it works out well for you. And it did for him this time. Just great, great line push, and just push that ball in across the you know the end zone, so or the you know the end line there. So. You know, 42 to 17, Raiders ahead of uh, two rivers, and uh, another opportunity for our twos to try to get some ball movement. You know, our offensive line continues to work on trying to find and get a push. You know, they're just our our, our uh, running backs are getting hit in back behind the line of scrimmage, and we need to stop that. All right, Raiders will get the. Ball back here momentarily. Now you also have to think about onside kick. You know, beware of that and be be conscious of it. So you need to get on that ball. It, last time it got a little sketchy there uh, before John Charlton fell on it and took a knee in the head for his 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 efforts. Cooper back, Bez back. So we got the usual suspects back for. Return duties. I'm surprised they don't sneak up just a little bit, cheat up a little bit, the Raiders, for that yeah. onside kick because they're, they're getting in tight. And You're right, coming. Jerry. You know. It might as well, right? Why not? Nothing to lose. Everything to gain. And a little yep. roller. Who wants it? Oh, the Raiders aren't going to get it either. <laughs> oh, boy. Henry Sibley just got the onside kick back. And there you go. That's exactly what the doctor ordered. Benny Clements, it hit him first, and it just kind of bounced right off his tummy and... Uh, Two Rivers came up with it. Now it's a little bit of a discussion out there where the ball Peter is says placed. they got it now. Well, Meyer said it was my football. Sardis saying it's my, it, was, it, was, it was my football. I think Sibley got it. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. had the ball. I mean, from what we saw here. All right. So, good, kick. good job there. Yep, that was a nice job. So an onside kick successful for Two Rivers. The first time they tried it, they almost were successful. This time it, it worked for them. So the Raiders once again have to set up shop here at the 49-yard line. The Raider 49-yard line. The defense has got to try to figure out a way to stop this uh, Two Rivers offense. Boykin, great kick. We're making we, it a game. We've seen the Raiders with some good onside kicks yeah. too this year. Yeah. Which has been kind of fun at times. Here we go. And Coffee will hand off Jet Near. And they will gain about 10 yards, and that's going to be a horse collar. What, 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 huh, let, let's finish strong here, Jer. Yeah, you know, I, I'm kind of of the opinion that we've given the twos quite a bit of play. We may need to bring back some ones to stop this because it, it's it's getting, you know, momentum is off. You turn right. towards two rivers. Now the horse collar, that's going to add on to an already good run. You know, the twos... Right now, I think you've got some game experience, you've learned some things, and you may need to put back some other guys to just stop this thing. Because you give them another score, 
you know, now you're at 42-24. Right. Yeah, it's still a solid yeah. spot, but but it's just getting it, it's getting scary here. A couple of guys back in. Ben Witt's back in. Uh, this game was 42 to two. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. I, I, we don't want it to get. I mean, let's be honest. At 42 to two, it was all Raiders. I mean. Yes. Here's a handoff, Goldenman on left side. He gets his feet hung on See, to a tackle by Vanderhoff. And that's the difference when you bring back a couple of ones back into the play because now you've got defensive penetration. The, uh, the defensive linemen are getting out into the backfield, you know, making that penetration so now the back can't just have a free run. We do have a player down for two rivers. He's kind of holding up right now. Hopefully it's just a runner. Sort of, I think, I think, yeah, I think it, it was is. Goldenman Hopefully too. it's just a, a little cramp situation. He's got his right foot up in the air. He's on his, on his tummy. Mm. Yeah, he's definitely kind of hurting right now. So the trainer's out check, taking a look at his right leg. Maybe it might be hamstring. Maybe pull a hamstring or something. Could be. Yeah, they're 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 definitely trying to stretch him out. Coach Orth is going out there to make sure everything's okay. Next live broadcast will be Thursday. We'll have the Raiders at Bloomington against Jefferson, and then Friday night we'll go up to Osceola, where the Prescott Cardinals will take on the Osceola Chieftains in the final regular season game of the year. And then after that game, we should find out the 244 playoff teams in Wisconsin, and then they will break them up by class after that. Good to see Goldman coming off yeah. the field here. He was the man responsible for the two-point conversion previously for Two Rivers. So, yeah, probably just got a little, you know, tweak of the hamstring, whatever he's walking. Looks pretty normal right now, so that's good, good for news for Two Rivers. Second down and 10. 42 17. Hastings leading. Tackle Cancer Day here in West St. Paul. All of the Warriors players wearing pink socks today. Looking good. Back to pass. Rolling out right. Coffee. Raiders coming with pressure. They better hurry. Coffee near the outside. And then he gets pushed out of bounds by Will Meyer. And I think he'll be back near the original line of scrimmage now, third down. Yeah, and, and wisely, Will Meyer just gave him a little pat, two-hand tip pat on the back of the shoulder pads there rather than trying to attack him out of bounds and avoid a potential, uh, you know, uh, late hit. It's third and nine for Two Rivers now, so they've got a ways to go. And it's, you can just see the difference between the Raiders twos and the ones. Now the ones with the defensive line back in there just getting so much more penetration and really changing the whole flow of Two Rivers offense. Looking for ways to slow them down and we haven't said that much today Not that second half but in the second half like Jerry said we have and here goes Moynihan again breaks into open space and he's got a touchdown a 23 yard score Jerry or a three we gotta get going here yeah this is the same thing we saw last week in South St. Paul you know we just say okay we got this thing in the bag let's just uh, mail it in you can't. You've got to finish the game, and, and obviously Two Rivers is finishing their game, and then the third score for Moynihan. That was a great run for him. Same kind of run he had in the last score, just exactly off the left the side same. there. Exactly. The same. Yeah, and he just found that way to get out there, and so the Raiders got to wake up and, and you know get into this game again. What do they want to do? Now, do they want to go for two oh, or they're they short of man. center, or what are they doing? Yeah, they're short of man on the, on the line, to, offensive line. I'm going to have to call a timeout here. And special teams, I guess not. They hurry. Man, not a good snap. The kick's up and good. All right. 42-24 is just getting too close, Jerry, for what this game was at 42-2 at one time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you've let them back in the game. You know, they've had some positivity on their offensive side of the ball, and now we just need to finish this league. Finish out the game and go to 4-2 and, and, and move on. Yeah, this game is just too close for me. You know, and, and when That's you... 18? I mean, it's 18 points. Yeah, when, you, when you look at, um, you know, a couple weeks ago when we went against St. Thomas, their twos were almost as good as their ones, and their threes are as good as their twos. Right. Not many teams can do that, have that, that second line come in and have no drop-off, you know, and that's kind of where we're at right now. Our, our number twos, there's definitely a noticeable drop-off between twos and ones, and it's not that they aren't playing their hearts out. It's just a little bit of a drop-off there, and when you're... When you know Two Rivers keeps keeps playing hard and our guys just qu aren't quite getting the job done, you know you, you got to bring somebody back in to, to finish this thing off. And I think next time we'll just wait till the fourth quarter. Yeah, I, I would have to agree with you there. 
I mean, might have been just a little early bring up. Two, two quick strikes, and then that one there, too. And Moynihan's got three touchdowns. This could be another onside kick. All our guys are up close this time. Boykin. Cooper's the only guy back, and it's going to be a chip shot. Better get back, and Axel Arnold's over there, and he can't get it. And we lost the football again, Jerry Rock. What's going on here? Wow. I, you know, hey, it's an 18 point game. This was a 22 to 2. Great two runners. I mean, their kicker, that was a phenomenal job because they saw everybody up on the line and so he just pooched it right over the front line and right in the spot where we weren't. Arnold tried to get over there, but again, on turf, that ball just takes some weird, weird hops there and, and Raiders run defense again. So. You know, I'm guessing we might have our, our number ones back in there at this point because you, you got to take care of this thing. You, you've got to stop the bleeding. Now they do. Yeah. Coffee, hands off left. Now pursuit. Charlton says enough of that business. Got some help no, from the horse side. Collar. They're trying to call for a horse collar. He had jersey. He did not have the no. shoulder pads. Coffee is being talked to, and so is one of the Raiders being pulled back there by his jersey, Kennedy. They tell them both of them to settle down a little bit. Yeah, that's. I mean, obviously, two Raiders have some emotion now, and the Raiders yeah. are. You know, they they they're they're feeling it, and the Raiders are like, well, geez, we got to try to finish this thing out. They're now they're trying to hang on, as opposed to before when they were just putting a hammer down. It was forty-two to two. Yeah, and that yeah, there you go, forty-two to two, yeah. and now it's forty-two twenty-four. What what a difference! Forty-two twenty-four is your score. And we still have 7.39 to go in the fourth quarter in regulation. Now here comes the sack, and you're in trouble. And Thomas Reifenberger said, well, you took me out of the game, let me rest, and now I'm mad because i got to go back in the game. And he absolutely hammers coffee, and we're seeing the difference between our one and twos, Jerry. Clearly. I mean, it's just it's so obvious the, the difference in the talent level between the ones and twos. And again, you know, God bless them. Credit to those twos. I mean, they're out there playing their hearts out. There's just a talent difference, and, and the ones are back in here to finish this thing off. Leave him out there. We need to go home yep. with, with a win here. Yeah. Clock should be running, to be honest. Yeah. Wing T, man in motion across the line. And now they're going to come back to Goldman on a, what was it, a reverse. And he's going to open up room and come back to touchdown from 35 yards. Subterfuge, Jerry, there's that word. Subterfuge, and that was classic. Uh, and, and uh, against our ones. Well, you know, once in a while a trick play will work and that's what worked right there. You, every once in a while you can pull one out of your book and, and you hope it works and it certainly did. So now you've got a 12 point game. This is just reminiscent of last week where we had Saul St. Paul in the bag and we let him up. You know, I mean, we, we, we need to, now we need to put our ones back what in on doing? offense and finish this thing out. You know, and, and, and again, Big Mo is now on the side of Two Rivers. Bad snap, got it back, kicks through, Boykin got it. Whole new game. Whole new game. Yep, now they see that they have a chance. You know, when they're, <laughs> they're only down by 11, it was 42 to 2. I don't know where to go. I mean, this, now it's like. <laughs> well, you know what? We're, we're, I mean, I, and I get what, what we did putting in the yeah. twos and the whole thing, but now this is a reason why you don't. Well, and everybody, everybody can learn a lesson, you know. Not only do your players learn a lesson, but even as adults, as coaches, you learn lessons in gameplay about what maybe you shouldn't have done. We learn that all the time. No matter what sport it is, as coaches, we are always learning things like, well, gosh, you know, maybe I shouldn't have done that. I've been doing this forever, but, hey, here's a new thing that I wasn't expecting. Raiders now, you know, on getting out here to, uh, for the return team. They still have their guys up close. Now Rico Cooper's closing up, but it's a little bit closer too, so they can't pooch that back like they did last time. Uh, Fryermuth is back a little deeper. Oh my goodness. Now they don't have a football. They're trying to get why, a ball out there. Why do I have to have indigestion from this game well, in particular? you got to have some fun, Nick. I mean, you know, let's just get a little excited here. <laughs> <That's a while. laughs> Nail biter. I were excited, but for a whole well, other reason. You know, I went and picked up a new yeah. thing of antacids yesterday well, at the, yeah, at the like drugstore. 17 so. of them? Oh, I'm telling you. All right, well. All right, now you see our Raiders, they have that second line of defense back, so they can't pooch it anymore like they did the first time. I mean, I, again, credit is too weird. Right, they, I, They're hey. doing some headsy smart <laughs> football. Absolutely. I, I'm 
like yeah, I, I'm impressed with what they've how what they've come back with. Have to. There it is. Same Short thing. Short pooch again. Get back. It's going to go out of bounds this time. Thank you. Flag. Do not let them kick no, it again. Just take the ball to 35 and let's move on and get this stupid thing over with. Yeah. You know? I mean, at this point, you just, you, you've got to move forward. That's what the guys and the coaches got to be saying right yep. now. Yep. All right, boys. Get back in there. Be ball sure, ball control, no fumbles, and just move the ball or just keep the clock rolling. Oh, man. Okay, well, it's been fun. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, it's been kind of a crazy game. Um, I, I didn't think it would be this fun this late, but <laughs> you got to, like Jerry said, credit Henry Sibley. I mean, my goodness, the way that they stepped up in the face of a 42-2 deficit and to somehow still have a chance to win this game in a 42-31 contest, 29 straight points. Out of the shotgun, Raiders will hand off. Friermuth cuts through. Up the right hash will gain seven. And that's what we need. Yeah. Just keep the ball on the ground, keep the clock moving. You know, five, six yards at a chunk is awesome if you can get that. Move the sticks and just, we got six minutes and 30 seconds. Let's just get this thing done and get the heck out of Dodge. Has anybody called the legitimate timeout that hasn't been an injury timeout? No, so not I, yet. I think everybody has their full slate. Yeah, full complement of timeouts on both sides of the ball. Wind kind of picking up throughout the day. But like I said, as the sun went away, it really became pleasant. Second down and three. Rainers from the 42 their own. Arnold out of the gun in a brand new game at 42-31. Handoff here will go to Friermuth for a first down. Gain of four, perfect. And that's exactly what you need. You get that push from the number one offensive line for Raiders. You know, Firemuth gets his spot, gain of four. You know, the clock is moving now. That's good, under six minutes. Ball's at the 46-yard line of the Raiders, but they are moving the ball, keeping it on the ground, and just keeping this thing rolling. First time I've stood up all day long. I know you people on video probably can't hear me as good, but I needed to actually stand for a second. You got bleacher butt. <laughs> I think I do. <laughs> oh, no. Out of the shotgun. Here is the Raiders and Axel Arnold, the quarterback, wearing the number seven. Fake the handoff, goes right up the middle on a quarterback keeper, right to midfield, carries half the pile, and gets pushed with the pile. And keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. First down, more. That's a gain of 15. That is one of the hardest runs I have seen in, since, what, 1957 football? I mean, my goodness. Once again, you get a couple of snow plows behind you with the, the blades down, and he just keep pushing. That's what happened with our offensive line. They just got behind him, literally, and just push, 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 push the pile. <laughs> I wonder if Axel's feet were actually on the ground there. If they just didn't pick him up and, like... I, seriously, <laughs> I bet they weren't. I bet he just picked him up and shoved him. That was no. kind of fun watching that. He wasn't down. I mean, it doesn't, nobody said he, he could pick him up and just carry him. And I think the 49ers crew would be proud of that with a bulldozer. For sure. First down and 10, Rainers, 4.54 to go. A little happier face on the radio guys here. and You can hear the wind picking up in the background as well. First down. Long count, kill clock, love it, handoff, one, there he goes, he'll gain about six. There we go, Firemouth toting the rock here and trying to move this clock and kill the momentum from Two Rivers because, boy, they were getting up on the sidelines and everything, you want to quiet them down, almost like you won the first quarter, Jerry. Yeah, that's right, I mean, they, they, they got excited and, you know, Kudos for the ones that stuck around, the, the diehards for Two Rivers, because they got treated to a fun fourth quarter. You know, those who left early, <laughs> they're going to go, what, what happened? I thought we'd be trying to, you know, save some bodies for Thursday and all that stuff at 42-2, but yeah. the ones have come back into the game, and they're asked to finish what they started. Handoff will go to Friermuth. Good little, oh, of course, we got two guys sitting on one of the linebackers. And that's where the flag went. And Reifenberger's going, where do I leave this flag? And it's going to come back, and we got another banged up player for Two Rivers. And yeah, he got cramp? I don't know. Yeah, maybe a cramp. He got flattened by two guys, and that's where the uh, infraction came, I think, too. The holding then just got pile driving on there. The game's creeping along yeah. here, fans. Yeah. Just taking this fourth quarter is taking forever, especially when we're... <laughs> Seeing some negative things happen for the Raiders. 
trainers out there ta talking to them. See, and you want to finish strong. You want something positive to go home on, right? I mean, you don't yeah. want to be talking about, hey, we just gave up 29 unanswered and just hung on for dear life. Two first players up. It's good to see that, that he's moving okay under his own power. A lot of the rain that they talked about today is staying off in the western part of the state, which is nice. Doesn't even look very heavy even for anybody, so that's good news. 42-31, 350 to go as the injured party off the field, and that was Harrison Berg. Second down, 15 after the penalty for Hastings. 76 degrees today. What a beautiful, beautiful day. Wind picking up, though, here in the fourth quarter. 3.29 to go. Clock will turn back on now as we restart this game after the injury. Here's the handoff. Goes to Friermuth. Gets back near the original line of scrimmage. Most important part right now is just watching that clock tick down. We're nearing three minutes left in the game. Third and 12, but uh, it's good the Raiders keep the ball on the ground. Just keep the thing moving. Eat up as much clock as they can. Enjoy today, fans, because the weather is going to go downhill next week, and we're talking Thursday, a high of 61. So, so it'll be chilly up in Bloomington, but Friday up in Osceola, a high of 55. Woo! Hello. Wind, winds of change. Hello, fans. Thank you, Scorpions. Yes, we will have Carhartts on a week from today. Out of the shotgun, here is a fake pitch. Axel on the run finds a wide Beautiful. open Johnny Charlton, 40, 35, 30, 25, 30, 15 out of bounds there. Or is he in play? I think they did throw him out of bounds, but Johnny Charlton's biggest positive play from scrimmage this year, offensively out of the tight end spot. That was a nifty drawn up play by the Raiders and Coach Cook. Very well execu executed there, and he was wide open. And more importantly, a couple things happened there. Number one, we got the first down, moved the ball way down to the Two Rivers 14 yard line. More importantly, I think, is if we if we had to give that ball up, they'd have to go a long way to get back into the score. So it's just a win-win there. Coach Orth not calling timeout. Clock to 2.10, and Axe will probably take it down as close as he can to the buzzer here. There he goes, and he'll hand off to Fryer Booth up the middle, and to the 10, to the 9, to the 8, to the 7, to maybe the 6, depending on where they spot him, and a good first down run inside the red zone. Jerry, as we try to sign off happy tonight. Yep, that was kind of fun. That reminded me of the old days of bowling the ring. It was just two men coming at each other, and or or else we used to do, we have the tackle dummies on the ground, and, oh, and the defensive sure, man yeah. meet the offensive guy coming yep. in the hole, and you just pop. It's like a couple of rams out there smacking helmets, and that's exactly what they did. And at this time of the game, and like we said, with Sibley back in it, I mean, this is real football again, right? I mean, yes, it is. we talked about it being almost a glorified scrimmage at one time at 42-2, but it's become real football again, like Jerry said, and the hits itself enough as a snap to Axel given to Fryer Move. Just hang on to it, buddy. There he goes, and won't get a lot. Third down, maybe lost a half a yard. Two yards. Yeah, he got tackled back behind the line of scrimmage, but you got 59 seconds left, so yep. you can go two plays and call it. Be done. You know number one would like to get in the end zone again. Well, of course he would. <laughs> <laughs> you know he's thinking. Or any yeah, other number on that roster, for that matter, would know, love to get in. I might find a, a seam here. Yeah. I know there's 40 seconds Come on, left. Boys. Come on, guys, block for me. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're, they're going to go pretty tight here. Raiders at 35 to go. Probably run one more time and call it a night. And let's see if he can get in there. Fry up the <laughs> middle. Yeah, he tried, but that's probably going to do it. Yeah, no. Well, the Raiders don't need to run one. Might as well just keep it. I know it looked pretty good at 42 to 2. 29 unanswered points from the Warriors today. But the Raiders, they find a way to win today against two rivers. The referee, White Hat, comes into the huddle and says, fellas, good game. Let's go home. The Raiders are 4-2. and two. two Rivers is 0-6. Final score, 42-31. The Raiders win this game here tonight. I want to thank you all for joining us on video. For now, we're going to sign off. I want to thank Hunter Pinky while we're wrapping up video today. The Raiders win 42-31 next ball game. 
Thursday night, Raiders and Bloomington Jefferson will have that game for you on KDWA. Likely video as well. We'll have to wait and see what Bloomington has in regards to pay-per-view business. But we hopefully will have it for you. So for you video watchers, we'll say goodbye to you. Your radio listeners, Dick Craig Stats, coming up in just a moment. Raiders, they win 42-41. You heard it and watched it on KDWA.